Yeah, and I, I, I remember I worked with the tattoo artist. The tattoo has been tattooing for like thirty years. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he waited for like thirty years, and he, I remember in the first um, few weeks of me like learning to tattoo, mm. he used to tell me that he'd hide cocks in people's tattoos. <laughs> I know. And I was like, sure. And he was like, no. And he showed me his portfolio. Yeah. And he'd like go, look, cock. And it, it was nothing obvious. But once you saw it, you couldn't unsee it. Yeah. So, so like there'd be like... a rose and the center of it would look like a bell end. And you'd be like, oh my God. And you'd just flick through his book and go, look, cock. And you'd have to cock. keep a straight face. No, 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 no. I was like, oh, God. I just couldn't believe that he... <laughs> He done that. I've been in shock. Yeah. So, like, he was, you've been tattooing 30 years. He just oh. didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was that's like, funny. what? <laughs> wow. Well, I was going to ask but, what's yeah. the funniest moment, so. but I guess that's up there, isn't it? <laughs> so, don't piss off your tattooist. That's yeah. all I'm saying. <laughs> no, I definitely don't need to ask what's the funniest. Well, hi, guys. Welcome to episode five, I believe it is already, of Visionary Academy. Today we have a very exciting guest with us today, tattoo artist and of course TV personality, Mr Jay Hutton. <laughs> how are you today Jay? I'm good, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Have you travelled far today? I've come from Chester, so an hour and 40 minutes, so it's oh, not that n- far. Not too bad at all then, no, not too good. bad. No, the traffic was alright as well, so. Oh, amazing, that's always a plus. Yeah. So what have you been up to, anything nice today, anything good? Have you been in your studio? I believe you're on your new studio, don't you? Well, I've had, I've had my studio since I was 21. Oh, so wow. I've had it a long time. Wow, yeah. So yeah. I, was, yeah. I was really young when I opened that. So I've had it now, what's that, 12 years? 12 years, Yeah, I'm about wow. to turn 34, so. Wow. Yeah, I it believe feels it's, like a lifetime. Yeah, I can imagine. Is it called an Adrenaline Studio? Yeah, Adrenaline Tattoo Studio, yeah. Amazing. I, yeah, I'd worked for, I'd, I was tattooing for about three years before that in another shop where I did my apprenticeship. Mm-hmm. And then the opportunity came for me to open my, my, um, my tattoo shop, which was about 45 minutes from where I grew up. Wow. So it was a bit of a distance. I had a good reputation where I used to work. So starting there was completely different. I was like starting from scratch again because mm. no one knew me in that area. Yeah. Um, but yeah, been there, what, nearly 12 years now, so. Wow, it's amazing. It's been, it's good, amazing. Yeah. So how was tattoo fixes for yourself as well? Yeah, it was wicked. It was yeah. well good. I mean, stressful, probably some of the hardest work. I think people see the glamour side of TV, but like it's very hard work. It's long oh, days. Imagine. It's mm. like some days were 18 hour days, oh. um, bare minimum 12 hour days, so. And you know, as tattoo artists, we, there's the, the, not just the the tattoos, but the filming around it. But then we might have like a, we can have anything from like a two hour to a nine hour tattoo in. Yeah. And then there's all the filming around that and after, before and after. So yeah, <clears throat> the days really drag. But we all had a good chemistry on set, and everyone yeah. on set was really cool. And we, because you, you're working with everyone on a day to day basis, and you spend, I mean, one season was like three months to film. Wow, that's so, a long time. Yeah, isn't so we it? spend a lot yeah. of time, pretty much every day, with mm. a lot of people. So we become like a big family. Mm-hmm. So it's fun from that. Yeah. So you go, it's like you're just working with your mates and stuff. Amazing. So it's wicked. Yeah, a bit like university in a way. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, can imagine, yeah, you know, yeah, a, I mean, a bit you spend like. a lot of time and you, you, your relationships grow with people. They become, they, and I mean, it was in London. I'm not from London, so I was mm. living there. And um, How was that for you? Hectic. Very, yeah. Different yeah, way of life. Say. Different way of life, yeah. <laughs> Fast. But then again, I was so busy and I was working all my days there pretty much. So then if I had a day or two free, I'd be going back home. It was only the odd days I was off, but then you spend a lot of the evenings when you do get out early. You spend a lot of the evenings with everyone around London, so it's mm. yeah, it's a hectic lifestyle, but amazing. very different to where I grew up. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. Well, we'll delve more into that, and of course, tattoo fixes a yeah. little bit later. But first, <clears throat> yeah. I'd like you to take us all the way back to the beginning. So yeah. your upbringing, yeah. home life, school, all that. Okay. You can tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so I'm originally from North Wales. Mm-hmm. I don't really think I've got a Welsh accent. A lot of people don't think I have. No, you don't. don't. Like no, you uh, don't, actually, yeah. no. <laughs> I, I, no one can really place me when they, they're like, I don't, wouldn't know where you were from. But um, yeah, so I'm from North Wales, a little town called Abergelly there, which mm-hmm. is just outside of real people. Probably have heard that more. Yeah. A uh, little seaside resort. Um, yeah, I had a great upbringing. You know, my mum and dad were amazing. And this was just me, my mum and dad, my brother. And yeah, we live, I mean, I, mean, when I was brought home from the hospital to a little two bedroom two bedroom house and a cul-de-sac which mm-hmm. was great you know and then we moved literally around the corner to a bigger house which is a four bedroom house yeah um but yeah just really you know normal very great upbringing mum and dad were amazing like always pushed us to you know be driven and work hard my mum and dad my dad was a singer 
He worked, oh, wow. yeah, he worked seven nights a week singing in the local pubs and clubs. And then yeah. he eventually became to be a radio presenter as well for 25 years, but did the singing wow. as well on the weekends. My mum at the beginning worked in like, you know, bars and pubs like cl- as a cleaner and stuff. So they just worked really hard. They didn't have a lot of money and they worked really hard to, you know, provide for us. And they went, they sacrificed so much that they went without just so we could have a decent upbringing, you know. So yeah. we were very lucky from that perspective. And, you know, I owe everything to my mum and dad. So, yeah. yeah, so some of your biggest inspirations for what you do today, I imagine. Oh, my mum and dad, Great yeah. role models to look up to. Yeah, and it, do you know what? It's so important because a lot of people aren't fortunate enough to have that, you know. Mm. My me, me best mate is the same, you know, he had a really good upbringing, he had great parents and stuff, and, you know, we will often talk about how important that is and, you know, how lucky we are to have had such great role models as parents, you know, um, because so many people don't. And, um, yeah, I'm just fortunate to be... I wouldn't be who I am if I didn't have my mum and dad. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's that's really commendable, you know, because yeah. like you say, a lot of people don't have that and not yeah. lucky enough to have that. Yeah. So it, it's nice that you had really good mo- role models in, in your life to help you from, yeah. from start to where you are now. Yeah, you know, 100%. And yeah. to inspire what you do today, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, and my brother, my brother's my best mate. Yeah. Like, we're, we've always been super tight. Like, well... Are you we, close in age or...? He's three years older than me. Right, yes. And there was a time, like, I mean... I'm his little brother, so like there was a time when he became a teenager and I wasn't there yet, and he'd be going out with his mates, and yeah. I was the annoying little brother who didn't want to take out anyone. And a bit so, envious of that. Yeah, yeah, so there was like a couple years, you know, where he was doing his own thing, and I was still, at, you know, I just come home and draw every night. So mm. we were not well, not that we weren't close. We were always close as a family, but he was always off doing his own thing, and I always thought yeah. he was a moody teenager as well. <laughs> so we only sort of came back together properly, like as I started getting a bit older, like yeah. seventeen. And then when I started going out with him, I was 18 and he'd see me out and he'd be like, what are you doing now? And yeah. that's when we started, we really came back close then and we, yeah. we, we're just best mates, yeah. Yeah, that's lovely to learn that you're very close to your brother as well. Oh, I yeah. am with mine as well, oh, you yeah. know. Yeah. It, it's always good if you have like siblings and that kind of thing as well, rather yeah. than being an only child and you have to like <laughs> find your way, you know, it's yeah. it's a bit more, uh, you know, frustrating. But yeah, no, it's it's good to know that you're so close. Oh yeah, we're best mates. And we work together. My brother's a tattooist as well, so and he works oh. at my shop with me. Oh, so, amazing. I mean, it's a good job we do get on. Yeah, so <laughs> you spend every day with each other, yeah, you know. Yeah, you know what, I, we often have customers come into the shop and they'll be like, oh, I couldn't work with my brother. And I'm like, yeah, but me and him, we're best mates. Yeah. Like, we get on, so it's to really good. To be honest, I, I say that as well, but I probably could work with him. <laughs> yeah. If you have that good relationship, it makes yeah. the job much easier, doesn't oh, yeah, it? Like you say, yeah. it's like being with your best friends, yeah, you know. that's it, yeah. So tell yeah. us a bit about school life. How was that for you? School. Did you have particular favourite subjects that you gravitated towards? Um, My was you, was like, you good at school? Well, in junior school, I mean, I don't remember much about junior school. Really, mm. just, a bit, just being all right. But then I got to <laughs> high school and then... Yeah, high school was good. Mm-hmm. Overall, good. You know, good experience. I, I think, um, I don't really would. I wouldn't say I had like really particularly favourite subjects until I got a bit older. Like yeah. once you get, because you have to do compulsory subjects, don't you? So I hated like maths and yeah, oh, English Same. and <laughs> science. I hated all. That yeah, then, I, yeah, I did as well. Yeah. I can vouch for that. <laughs> oh, and I was shit at them. Can I swear on it or not? No, no, you can. Okay, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I've got a bit of a potty mouth. No, I'll try no, and tone it no, down. No, you're though. fine. <laughs> Other guests have as well. You're fine, Jay. <laughs> okay, yeah. So yeah, I just just hated all that sort of stuff. I'm not academic, and I, it it's not that I'm just if I can't if I'm not interested in something, I can't put my mind to it. Yeah, I'm fully focused on stuff I love doing. I'm pa- yeah. if something I'm passionate about something, I'm fully focused and I'm all in. Mm. But so like yeah, so in those classes, I mean, I was a chatterbox. So I just. I'd get in trouble. Bit They're of just... a class clown kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, but mm. not too much because yeah. it, my dad would have bollocked me if he'd have found out I was a bit <laughs> yeah. too much of a class clown. But yeah. um, <clears throat> no, I mean, I did get a bit of bollocking sometimes. But mm. yeah, I was, you know, if I wasn't interested, in I'd just talk and get into trouble for that. But in the subjects, I like, I liked drama because yeah. you could, you could piss about in it, you know, like yeah, exactly. have fun, couldn't you? Like, so <laughs> a bit I always, freedom. Yeah. 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 And if I had a back to back double lesson of drama, I'd be thinking two hours are just fun now like you yeah know. So right, I, have I, a laugh with your friends that yeah, kind of thing yeah yeah and me and my best mate were growing up we were just we were like the class clowns together yeah you know everyone <laughs> used to in those classes used to make us do stuff like we were just trying to make everyone laugh that was our thing but mm. yeah so drama art <clears throat> art i did it when it was compulsory and then yeah i've told this story a million times but my art teacher gave me a c and an effort grade of five which is the worst effort grade you get wow <laughs> and you know i came home and my dad was like what's that that's not true so then long story short I went to parents evening 
and she didn't even know I was. She gave me a shit grade and didn't know I was. Oh, and then wow. she was like, do I teach you? And I was like, yeah. And then my dad was like, well, it's funny you should say that. And I'd had all these drawings that oh. I've been doing since I was a kid and he just put me in front of her. And I, I bet the was, teachers would hate that as well. I oh yeah, she, but she was yeah. mortified because she graded me, didn't know I was and gave me like a terrible grade. And yeah. like I'd, I'd done drawn portraits since I was a kid. You, you don't normally hear about that where no. teachers don't even know who the students are. Yeah. That's quite unheard of, I, I literally think. said that. Yeah. You know, I've, I've um, got an appointment with you at like half five. I mean, she was like, what's your name? Do I teach you? And yeah. I was like, <laughs> Yep, you do. <laughs> Especially if you're a bit of a class clown as well. Like that would have made yourself a bit, you know, out there more than the other kids. Yeah. I'm quite surprised at that. I mean, I was uh, there were certain teachers I was a bit cheeky with, but in a fun way, not like yeah. cocky or anything. I yeah. was just cheeky with because I could get away with it and have a bit of a laugh <laughs> with them. Um, but then other, you know, I'd be quiet as a mouse in other classes, you know. Yeah. Like, you know. So it would all depend. Yeah, it would depend. Bit, basically, I would judge people on yeah. one-to-one <laughs> yeah. basis, you know. No, um, I, I'm the same as well. You know, it's always some people bring out one side of your personality, some yeah. people bring out another. It all depends on yeah, exactly. who you're surrounded by as well. You know, yeah. that's a lot well, to do that's with it. Isn't it? it. So, so school yeah. was quite <laughs> a fun experience for you, I guess. Yeah, re- yeah. Overall, yeah, it was a good experience, and then I stayed on to sixth form because. At 16, people say, you know, I don't know what I want to do at 16 and when I'm leaving school. So I just stayed yeah. on just to, to bum about a little bit, to be honest, and <laughs> yeah, exactly. try and figure out what I was going to do with my life. And then, um, so I did that for two years and I loved sixth form because mm-hmm. you had the freedom, you could leave, you could go out of school and I was driving then as well. So I could knock about a bit and mm-hmm. yeah, it was, sixth form was good. But then, yeah, that's how I started figuring my way out into tattooing after that. Yeah. yeah. So how was your teen years, you know, going on to that stage of yeah. your life? I mean, did you have like different jobs before you went on to tattooing? Yeah. Did, you do, did you do the whole, you know, figuring yourself out? Oh, yeah. Doing different jobs, seeing yeah. what's for you, that kind of thing? Yeah. So <clears throat> my mum and dad were always like, as soon as I turned 16, you're getting a job now. you got yeah. to pay your way. You got as to as parents do. Yeah, you got to yeah. learn how to pay your way. Like, yeah. You can't pay for everything, you know what I mean? Mm. So my first job was in McDonald's. Hated it. Um, absolutely hated it. But do you know what's funny? My dad was always very like, you might just be working at McDonald's, but you go into that interview in a suit. Yeah. Like, and I was the only one mm. who turned up in a suit. Like those people getting interview- interviewed for McDonald's in trackies and that. <laughs> yeah, and I could day. tell the manager was <laughs> yeah. just mad impressed because I wore a suit and they probably thought, who's this 16 year old kid wearing a suit? They, I think he was just going to give me the job no matter what for that. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> I, yeah, I got the job. And then... Um, Good first impression, I suppose. You yeah. know, well dressed, presentable. Well, yeah, I think that's that what can go for any job. Doing. I think. Yeah. You know, and my best mate as well, who I grew up with, and he's still my best mate now. He went for a job at the same time, and he got it as well. Mm. And I thought, well, even though I hate working here, at least we can work together. But he yeah. he literally did five days. Right, this is this is actually <laughs> funny. He did five days. And he left after five days to go work in Tesco. But in that five days, he got a bollocking because I worked on the counter, yeah, and he worked in the kitchen. And he got a bollocking because instead of cooking McChicken sandwiches, he was cooking hash browns. Oh, no. <laughs> and putting them out of McChicken sandwiches. So oh, people bless him. wanting a chicken sandwich and biting into potato. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, bless him. <laughs> I mean, my first question is how and why? <laughs> well, because when they're frozen, they look the same as the chicken sandwiches. So I, I guess. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> oh, my God. What oh, that's an idiot. comical. Yeah, it well, was brilliant. Well, I suppose things like that got you through your shifts at least, yeah. you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I ended up being there, what, nearly a year and a half to two years. That's quite long for, for yeah, McDonald's, long. I suppose. I mean, some people yeah. are there for years, I suppose. That's wrong to say. <clears> but... Suppose, if you like it, you like it. Yeah, exactly. You I either like didn't. it or you don't. Yeah. You stick at it for a few months, a year, whatever you're comfortable with. Yeah. You know. I was so. just trying to earn money, you know, to pay away. I had a car. Yeah. I wanted to put fuel in that and be able to do things, and you know, it wasn't a lot of money, but it was, it was money at the end of the day. So. You and know, it like, probably would have seemed like a lot at that time when you're that age. Oh yeah, you, you go know? from having no money for yourself, and you just you make money. You get a bit, and it's like, wow, I yeah. want. You know, that's enough for you yeah. at the time, isn't it? Yeah. You know? and do you know what? My dad said when I've got my first paycheck, me, me and my dad were like. Like, go and spend that. Just go and blow it on whatever you want. It's your first ever paycheck. Really? Just blow it on whatever you want. And I went out and I bought a Lacoste t-shirt Yeah. that cost me 60 quid. I think my wages were 120 quid. Mm. And I spent 60 quid on a t-shirt and 60 quid on a pair of Lacoste trainers as well. I came home and my dad was like, what have you bought? I said, I bought this t-shirt and those trainers. Well, and he said, what, you spent 120 quid on tra-? I said, like, the t-shirt was 60 quid. He was like, 60 fucking quid for a t-shirt. <laughs> I was like, yeah, <laughs> but it, was like, you know, it's You cool. told me to spend it on whatever yeah. I want, you know. <laughs> he was like, not again. You don't yeah. do that again. Yeah, and then I got a, then I, I wanted to leave there, so mm. still didn't know what I wanted to do. 
And then I applied to work in Asda because I thought that will just be better. Yeah. And I, I, <laughs> I applied to work in Asda and I fucking ended up on the fish counter. Like, <laughs> it was, so it ended up being worse. Like, you know. Yeah, I was like, going to yeah. say that's the worst one, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I should have stayed at McDonald's, you know. Yeah, um, you'd, you'd rather work at like the cash or maybe like, you know, stock. Yeah. Bringing out the food, that kind of thing. Yeah. You know, the shelf work. Anywhere. That kind of I could have been on, do you know what? Yeah. I could have been on any other department and I would have accepted it. But yeah. when you have to wear that netted, when you're 18 and you yeah. have to wear that netted green hat and a little pinny. Your pride and just kind of goes, doesn't in. it? Yeah. <laughs> it, it ruins your reputation completely. Yeah. But yeah, so that, I mean, I did that a couple of years. And then alongside that, my brother used to DJ in a nightclub. Oh, wow. So, yeah. And then he got a job. He used to DJ in this nightclub. And then an offer came to him to DJ in Rill, in this main nightclub in Rill. And he decided to go there. So I said to him, Teach me how to DJ, so and I'll yeah. take over the job you're leaving. And it was between me and another lad who was one of his mates at the time. But I really needed the money because I was like, yeah, not on much money at all, like a few hundred quid a month. And, and um, you were still eighteen, nineteen at this point, was you? I just, I just turned eighteen. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So he was like, so he was like, right, okay. So he took me up to this place and we walked into this nightclub, and he's like, this does that, this does that, does that, that, and he goes, you are DJing Saturday night, and I was like. <laughs> I'm looking at this like yeah. all this mixing board and these fucking decks and I'm like I oh just wing it. So then I yeah, I did that. I ended up doing that for two years, like on a Friday and a Saturday. Oh, it was one of the best jobs I've ever had that was. It was so good. Yeah. Yeah, and, I and, absolutely loved that. And did you do that for quite a while? Or? Yeah, I ended up doing that for two years. I left Asda and then but during like Asda to tattooing was like the tr- the DJ thing was like transitioned between mm. the two. So I was I was DJing when I was in Asda and then when I got my tattoo apprenticeship and I left Asda I was still DJing and like but I did all three jobs at one time so I was working like seven days a week at one point yeah it was heavy at that point but once I got my apprenticeship like that's all I wanted to do so I was happy to do it but yeah the DJing was amazing unreal yeah yeah, what, what, what are some of the best nights and worst nights you've had with DJing? Because uh, my last guest, who's a DJ himself, he said, you know, you get a lot of highs and lows with it, yeah. you know, a lot of uh, eventful, you know, moments. Yeah. Well, this club, when it first opened, was like a million pound nightclub. So, yeah, yeah oh, quite a big a, nightclub yeah, it was, then. It, yeah, it was, yeah. It, was, it, was, it was like really well known and it did really well. Then I can't remember what went on, but it, it mm. dived a little bit. So then by the time I got there, it was a very hit and miss. Like, yeah. it was a bit out the way from where everyone in our area lived as well. So, you know, like taxis from there to real, if you want to go out after, yeah. would cost a lot of money. So some weekends, it would be dead. There'd be like no one in there. And then yeah. other weekends, it would just be packed to the brim. Yeah. So you didn't really know from one week to the next whether it was going to be that or not. So the lows, I suppose, of when it was dead, you'd, have, you'd be stood there. But How would you get through the shift? Uh, would you just monotonous. practice it was just, pretty just much? Playing the same songs. Yeah. And just get, but to be fair to them, if, if it didn't pick up within a couple of hours, they'd like, they let you go and you still got paid. Yeah. So that yeah. was good. Um, but then, yeah, th- there was some rough nights there as well because there was a lot of kickoffs there. Yeah, a as, as you get with any nightclub, yeah. you know, <laughs> you yeah, get some drunken brutal idiots. Brutal things went on there, yeah. Yeah. Lot of time. Yeah, I mean, and then it got closed down because there was a proper kickoff on the last night. Oh, gosh. And um, I don't know what had happened, but it yeah. just started. I mean, I, I, we used to start at nine o'clock. <laughs> yeah. And by quarter past nine, there was just people scrapping everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Make me wonder what they're putting in the alcohol, you yeah. know. <laughs> and across the road there was like a there was like a field and there was like a farm and there was like a shed with all like knives, pitchforks yeah. and farming gear, right? Mm. This brawl went out into the car park and across the road and by the time I got me, me stuff together and got out there, it was just chaos. I mean Bedlam. Just yeah. people broken into that shed and pulled out all the knives and oh pitchforks and were just swinging them at each other and I was like what? Oh my god. And I, I pulled out in the car and the next minute they all just ran towards me. I'm in the road <laughs> and I've just got like 200 people just running at me. I'm thinking they're going to run at me car oh like, my god. <laughs> like a stabby and they're just going past me car. I was like, they're they're going to oh. break into the car or something. Yeah well, they're yeah. going to bash me car off. Oh, I was fucking shit. I would be terrified. thinking they're going to ruin my car. Yeah. Anyway they all just trying to kill each other and then I was like see you later yeah <laughs> and it closed down after that oh wow yeah just so. after conveniently you know yeah well that ended up closing it down because mm. yeah it was a mad it, it was night. too much yeah you don't really hear about stuff like that I suppose. no it was so, heavy very it, unique thing. yeah it was heavy yeah but so was, was that times. was that kind of like the end of DJing for you did you still pursue it after that yeah, no I mean I my brother had done an 
got another job DJing in, in real mm-hmm. in a different place. And he used to do like three or four nights a week there. And I'd, I'd stop DJing at this point, but sometimes, because yeah. he was working in the day in the job he had at the time, he was knackered some nights and he was like, will you just cover for me? Like, So yeah. I did the odd time there, which... Was and again. did you learn through your brother? Was he a good teacher? Or? Yeah, yeah. Mm. I mean, yeah, he taught, like, a lot of it was learning on the job as well. Like, and plus yeah. you have to have an ear for it. Like, you know, you have to know how to mix songs and Yeah, look out for sounds and, and yeah, that kind like, of thing. Yeah. You can't just go, I mean, some people got no rhythm, have they? So. I know. If I looked at a DJ, I wouldn't know what to press or what, I wouldn't know where to start. Yeah. So it, it is a craft. It yeah. is a craft. And it's all changed now. Like, like the, the like then we literally had that, de- not like, like, um, what were they called? You know, like the record decks. We didn't have them. We had scratch decks. But yeah, like they were, I can picture they them CDJs in my mind. CDJs they were. Where do you, you know, go do you like... Them? CDJs. So they were like that, but they've changed now. I think they, they do it all like on laptops and stuff now. I wouldn't yeah. have a clue now. Y- you go it. like that, wouldn't you? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know the exact <laughs> ones you mean. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the, the spin ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Those ones, that's what we are. Old school. Old school. Yeah. But they were new school then because the old school ones were the actual scratch records and that. But yeah, I didn't oh, use so that, them. that's even further back. Then, yeah, so we yeah. Only, I didn't use them. But now mm. it's compl- I mean, it's like a new game now, isn't it? So yeah, because you do when you go to a lot of <laughs> nightclubs now, you do see like just laptops now, don't you? Yeah. And they just do it from there, and it makes you wonder how. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have a clue. If someone put one of those in front of me now, I'd be like, no idea. Yeah, how but you DJ. do you still remember like the old, uh, I guess, method of how to DJ? Like, oh, if I with, used with the those, that equipment, the I could, older, yeah. If if you someone put that those, that equipment in front of me now, I know how to do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's still to this day. Oh yeah. So it's like riding a bike; you yeah. never forget. I know I that, but like you put new equipment now. <laughs> be like We're not going to attempt to learn the new one. No, no, no. <laughs> bit a uh, bit too technical. No, it would I'm be too, for me. Like in my opinion, for me, like I'm way past that. Like there was a good time in my life. I look back at it and it, I'm fond of it, but and good memories. But I wouldn't do it again. No, no. Good for the time, but so. not now. <laughs> no, never <laughs> I'm say a tire, never. It's not a DJ <laughs> anymore. So going from DJ, um, <clears throat> did you have any like hobbies or interests that you did whilst you were a teenager? Any more sort of jobs? Yeah, when I was a teenager, I used to play football. That was it. Like yeah. I think every kid in my age wanted to be a footballer, and yeah. that's all I ever wanted to be when I was younger as well. But you know, um, I never pursued it. Mm. Um, I, to be honest, I think actually what ruined it for me was I wasn't very confident like that. Yeah, and um, I was quite shy, and you know, I always. When I used to play football, I knew that a lot of lads were better than me, and that used to, my nerves used to take over when I used to play football. Yeah. Um, but actually, I wasn't a bad footballer. Oh, really? But yeah. Yeah, um, yeah but I think it was my confidence that actually killed that for me. That's a shame, isn't at it? At the time, you know? yeah. Because you never know what could have. But it, yeah, you I have know. to naturally have the love for it. And would you say you did? Or? Oh, yeah, I had the love for it. Mm. I just, it was it's con- honestly just down to confidence. I just wasn't very confident like that. Mm. But I went to like there was a there was like um I went to the Liverpool Academy twice not not actually as a academy player but they did these things where you could go there for three days and train mm. and I played there and I scored a belting goal past the fucking Liverpool reserve <laughs> goalkeeper who was like at the time like from like near past just past the halfway line yeah. and my dad just yeah a very proud moment <laughs> yeah, definitely yeah. yeah yeah that was good but yeah. So I, I I feel like no I don't know I'm not saying I had it to make it to a professional level at all yeah but you know maybe I could have done a bit better than what I did yeah definitely a- any other hobbies or sports you took up other than <clears> football no no I didn't I, that's it no yeah. I just I was I started going to the gym I was a very skinny kid so yeah. I used to just go to the gym. I started going to the gym when I was like 16 that was it but I think everyone does that don't they at some point yeah and then, yeah and then so that's been a constant since then mm. but that's the only that was the only thing in those early years that I ever did consistently. Yeah. yeah, amazing. No real sports. So movies. I guess moving on to tattoo fixers. Yeah, you know, how did that come about? Was you scouted? Was it partly our <clears> idea <throat> for the show? Or yeah, no, I was scouted for it. Um, mm. But I'll try and keep this story very short because it's a bit long. But um, so when I worked in the other shop, I got the opportunity to open my studio, moved to Ellesmere Port, which is now yeah. about an hour, forty-five minutes to an hour away. And um, it's near I, Liverpool, is that right? Yeah, it's not yeah, far from I thought there, yeah. so. Um, mm. So, yeah, I I had a good reputation back home. Moving there, open the shop, and I thought, well, I, no one knows me, but I know my work's good, so it'll I'll I'll make it through like that. But I need people to buy into me and mm. stuff. So, at the time when I was eighteen, like Twitter had just not long been out really. So, and everyone had a, a blue tick who. I mean, you could buy a blue tick now, but like mm. you couldn't. That then. was the big thing. Yeah, back then. if you had a blue yeah. tick, you were it was actually you. So like, yeah. I remember thinking, God, you can actually. They, if I tweet them, they mm. might see. Yeah. Something I've written. Yeah. Like, 
And that's could be a world famous yeah. lady, and they still might see it, but they might not. Mm. But so I just thought, well, if I can tattoo a celebrity, because I used to see celebrities getting tattooed by tattoo artists that were shit, and used yeah. to think they're I getting can do bad better tattoos. than that. Yeah. And but the but the tattoo artists would get so much like publicity for it, and mm. be like other celebrities would want to get tattooed by them, which obviously brought them more work publicly. Yeah. And yeah, I think they're not even. That good. On my level. Mm. Not in a big headed way. I just thought, I, I know I can tattoo better than that. Yeah. So my idea was if I can get a celebrity at my studio to tattoo, then people will just start thinking he's the man to go to. Yeah. So I just used to use Twitter to my advantage. And I used to I used to spam the shit out of celebrities on there. Like mm. if you could have put a picture of your food up and I'd sweet to it saying yeah. <laughs> tattoos by Jay Hutton, follow me. And I post yeah. pictures of me work. And I thought, well, you know what? They'll either follow me or they'll block me. Yeah. Either way. What have you got to lose? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I just used to spam the shit out of everyone mm. most nights. And Who are some of the celebrities you try and reach out to, I guess? Anyone. Anyone and Absolutely everyone. Absolutely anyone. But, mm. like, if you had a blue tick, you were getting spammed. I couldn't, yeah. I might not have even known who you are. <laughs> yeah. But, like, you might not have yeah. had an interest yeah. in them, but, you know, they're <laughs> getting tweeted either way. That's how the blue then. So, like, um, but loads of celebrities followed me. Oh, wow. The odd one blocked me. But, like, who um, was the most exciting one for that? time i guess that so stood out to you neo followed me wow i didn't um, know that pitbull at the time wow. Tra- uh travi mccoy the game the rapper yeah like, i know i know yeah like they yeah. all started following me i was like fuck you know you know <laughs> like, of course yeah, yeah like, i, I would have been was. the same i mean I, this is next level shit if yeah. i'll tell you one of them like pinch yourself kind of moment yeah, probably yeah, thinking, yeah. Oh, i'm just i'm just gonna follow me so then a few and then people from this country started following a lot of celebrities from this country started mm. following me and then what I, type of celebrities were those reality all people stars who or? Were like on reality tv shows at the mm. time um like kerry katona followed me yeah um and the first celebrity i actually tattooed was a lad off geordie shore at the time when geordie shore was big the uh jay gardner jay yeah he I remember was one of the jay, first yeah. people i tattooed <clears throat> um years and years ago yeah and so what i would do then is when they came in i'd have a picture of them at my studio picture of me tattooing them and yeah. then i post that online like a and bit then, of promotion self-promotion yeah and then yeah. did that with kerry katona and people like that and then what happened was it built up momentum because my local paper would get hold of it and they wow. they just yeah. put it in the paper random my local paper and it'd say like celebrity tattooist jay mm. hutton tattoos blah 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 and then i'd take a photo of the, the paper mm. of us in it together and then i'd post that and it oh, sort wow. of made, started making people believe yeah. you were you were the man to go to so then i was getting loads of work obviously yeah. and then other celebrities would get on to me and and just i just kept that going that momentum mm. then i met mike tyson i did a port i said to my brother i said let me do a portrait of mike tyson yeah. on you and um i'll tweet him and see yeah. if he fucking messages about and i t- i did it i tattooed him mm. i tattooed this portrait of mike tyson and then i tweeted it and then i fell asleep and i went woke up the next morning my mate was ringing me he was like have you seen have you seen that mike tyson's tweeted you and i was like no and i went on thinking mike tyson had put something like oh wow this is amazing i'm really grateful this is crazy wow. that you've done this tattoo but yeah. really grateful and yeah and then i took a picture of that yeah and then yeah and then that was in the it, paper it yeah. said something like oh the headline was good it was something like um tyson knocked out by jay-z yeah or something like that. <laughs> and i was like this is sick so i took a picture of that and it just built up momentum and mm. then that's how tattoo went fixes from came there forward. basically tattoo fixes just heard about me from that and when that when did stuff. tattooing kind of start like did you train yourself did you have someone train you or yeah so i got an apprenticeship in a studio where i lived which was around the corner from my house yeah and i i basically watched a program called miami inc for mm. anyone that remembers that program it was amazing no i do, I do. <laughs> yeah i it? do yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, so, such a good program mm. so yeah so i watched kat von d do but i didn't know anything about tattooing i never thought about being a tattooist no did I it just, just kind draw. of come to you one day and you thought yeah, it was give just it a go watching that like yeah. I'd, I'd always been good at drawing and i was always drawing portraits i'd done that since i was little i'd always drawn faces and i didn't know you could one i didn't know anything about tattooing and, and i did not know that you could tattoo people's faces like you know portraits mm. and stuff and so when i saw kat von d do that i was like wow that Inspired. is something i'd love yeah. to do that and my dad wasn't into tattoos at all didn't like didn't never wanted us to have tattoos or anything like that mm. So I really didn't know how to approach that and say, yeah. <laughs> I want to be a tattooist. So I was thinking about it. So I started drawing like loads of drawings and then my brother was secretly getting tattooed without me dad and hiding them. <laughs> hiding from, them yeah, yeah, he'd just hide them from me dad. And did you have any at this point? No, or? I didn't no. have one. No. No. And then I said to Dan, I said, oh, can I come watch you get tattooed? And he was like, yeah. So I went in there and the lad who owned the shop, Dan was like, can you come in and watch? And he was like, yeah. Mm. So I watched and then Dan told him basically that I was shit out at drawing. Yeah. And he was like, let's have a look. So showed him my drawings. He said, you know 
do a few more, come back in a week. Mm -hmm. So then I went away and I was just like, right, I'm going to smash this. And I just drew loads of portraits of rappers at the yeah. time that I was into and took them in like a week later. And long story short, there's loads more to that, but there's long story short, he gave me the job straight away. Wow. Basically said start on Saturday yeah. or whatever it was. And that was it, yeah. Just yeah. Went from there the rest is just, history kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I guess kind of going from tattooing, what um, inspired you to, I guess, because I, I imagine it came from sketch artwork, that kind of thing, yeah. watching the shows you've just said. Yeah. Was there any other inspirations other than that? No, literally I, I started tattooing at the shop. I just, once I watched that program, I mean, I was like, this is what I want to do. I'd yeah. never known what I wanted to do. Yeah, never, you still at this point had yeah, no idea. I had no mm. idea what I wanted to do. I didn't know how the hell I was going to do. I didn't know what I was going to do. No idea and whatsoever. You had no thoughts of anything else at nothing. all as, as a backup or anything? No, no. nothing. Nothing mm. at all. And so... You took a risk. Well, yeah, but mm. the un it sold me because I, I was so passionate about drawing. I'd always yeah. done drawing. Until I got that bad grade in art, I stopped drawing for a couple of years then. Oh, it really? Sort of, I just thought... Oh, so it knocked your confidence a bit? Well, it didn't knock me confidence. I... I I got moved to another class mm. as a result of her giving me a terrible grade, my dad speaking to her. <laughs> and I got moved to another class and then I thought, I'm going to show this teacher what I can do. And yeah. I drew my watch off my wrist and I got an A. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, can't believe she gave you, graded you that. <laughs> yeah. So that was it. And then, and because of that, I just stopped drawing. Like, mm. I was just like, waste mm. of time. Like, yeah. you know, if I, like if I can draw and one person goes, you're not that good and everyone goes you're amazing and it's like I feel like fucking hell it's like what what do I do you know which it, yeah. one yeah so exactly stopped, and then mm. I just the, the, watching that show reignited my passion for drawing yeah so like and then as soon as I knew you could do that as a career and do portraits which is what I always do I thought yeah, yeah. I just knew what I knew I wanted to do it mm. and, and that I was, was do the spark to do it. if you like yeah 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 so I was very lucky that I got took on and got the opportunity because it doesn't just happen like that. No, it's definitely very not. difficult to get a tattoo in apprenticeship. I get asked a lot, you know, how to get into it. Yeah, and it's very difficult because not only have you got to find somewhere that's good enough to give you an apprenticeship, mm. that, that, like you've got to be good enough at drawing. Then you've got to get the opportunity where someone even wants to take you on. Yeah, and you've got and, to stand out and all these well, different things. And they've things. got to be good at tattooing. Yeah. Otherwise, you're learning from someone who's bad. Yeah, you and know. then you pick up them bad habits yeah. and then that affects your skill set. Yeah, and it yeah. can take longer for you to progress and stuff like that. So it's very yeah. difficult so industry it, it to could have into. taken you another 10 years on top of what, yeah, of course. you know, the opportunity came about, yeah. you know. You never know these no, things. No, but I sometimes, you know, I feel like things are just meant to be. I think yeah. I was just always meant to be a time. The timing was right and everything. Yeah, I, yeah. I think even if I hadn't got it then, I'd, I'd have... I'd just, I would have found a way to be ta be a tattoo artist. I think it was yeah. just I was meant to be a tattoo artist. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. So from tattoo fixers, so you said you were scouted. Mm -hmm. What was your first, um, I guess, week of filming? How was that? You yeah, know, because so, it ran E four, I believe. Was yeah, it? yeah, yeah. That's e four right. and it went on to Channel Four as well at one point. Yes, but it started that's on right. E4. But um, how did you kind of like? Because um, you said you were scouted, reached out to. People start seeing you work on Twitter. Yeah. Saw the Mike Tyson portrait, of course. Yeah. Um, I guess, did E4 reach out to you from there and say, we'd love to have you for yeah, I got the show? Yeah, ju I just got a tweet on Twitter yeah. from a casting director who said uh, it was a public tweet. It, was, well, it wasn't like a DM. Yeah. So I thought, to be honest, I thought it was, I didn't think it was real. I thought it was a joke. <laughs> like, because I thought this is a bit of a weird way. <laughs> to be something. honest, I would have thought that as well. Yeah. So I don't, I don't blame you for that. Yeah, no. <laughs> so we're casting for a new TV program on E4, as we're casting for new tattoo artists. Um, would you be interested? And mm. just as a, in case it wasn't, I just yeah. wrote back and thought, maybe that could be cool. Yeah. Because this is what I've been working towards, not to be famous, but to build my business and build my profile so that for work, for business, And, and TV certainly would have helped with that. Well, the thing yeah. is, you know, it. I never got into TV to be famous because yeah. I, I wasn't interested in being famous just for being famous. Mm. I wanted to be known for what I do and yeah. for being good for what I do. So... And that would obviously help my brand and my business. So it's all it was all business driven. You know, I don't couldn't see myself ever being on TV for any other reason. No. Other than doing what other I other than your craft. I mean, I've course. done other T V things, but that's off the back of doing stuff. And I've mm. you know, I'm very careful about what I've done on T V. I've I'm, but basically I'm a tattoo artist and I did a tattoo show on T V. Yeah. That, you know, I do what I love on T V. Yeah. So I'm grateful from that point of view that, you know, because some people go on TV just because they want to be famous and actually... Yeah. and put on a character that they're not, Yeah, basically. you you you're being mm. someone that you're not. And then mm. what, what happens is with that is you see a lot of people that end up being miserable because they've portrayed themselves as a character they're not. 
and now everybody knows them as that and they've yeah. got to live up to that and yeah. they can't let the mask slip and if yeah. they do and people see the real them they're scared that people won't like them and so they, they constantly if, chase that exactly. character exactly and if they regret the character that they put out at first they can never erase that no. or take that back That's it's it. out there yeah. you know it's exactly. it's public knowledge then and then you've got to escape from that character so you, yeah. it's always best being yourself absolutely you, you know, know. That, that's the thing I would that's the only advice I'd give to anyone who's going to TV just just be yourself regardless mm. of people like you or not just be you because there's, if you start pretending to be a character yeah you will end up in the long run being very unhappy exactly you've I got couldn't to agree that more. character it's, and it's I awful couldn't agree more yeah and imagine. a lot of people do that even to this day yeah. as well you yeah. know not only about them but they feel yeah. the need to put on a bit of a persona a character yeah. and then they end up miserable down the line like yeah. what you've just said well th th the thing is as well some some TV shows are designed that way to make you to show off your bad sides for entertainment mm. purposes, you know. So, yeah. you know, I think people who go on Love Island take a, a massive risk. Yeah, you know, because it can go one way, and, and the it's other the for biggest you. show in the UK as yeah, well. Yeah, you know, mm. it's, it's and I think if you want to be like people see like this being famous and rich lifestyles and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and that's what they want to chase. The flip side of that is if you're not going to be yourself. There's you consequences become, oh, to there that. Are massive mm. consequences, long, long term consequences. Yeah. You know, that they, they don't think about because when you're young and you're in the moment, a lot of people just want that and go, yeah, I'll do that. Yeah. But it's, um, you've got to navigate that world very carefully yeah. when you're in it. One just, slip can cost well, yeah. maybe your life. Yeah. You don't, know. don't just, you know, stay true to who you are and your morals and your values and stuff like that. And don't shy away from them for anything, especially not money. Yeah, exactly. Don't chase money. No. Don't chase fame. Well, just yourself. don't sell your soul for it. Yeah, that's, that's it. all. I've, I've just never, I, you know, everyone chases money. You know, we all want money for like, you know, it makes a different us have things. A better life. And yeah, stuff, you know, yeah. And provide stuff for our family and stuff like that. That's what we all want. But never sell your soul for it. I've never sold my soul for money. I never will. Yeah, yeah. that's that's very good to know. That. Yeah. that's good. Yeah. So, how was filming for Tattoo Fixers? What were the first? I mean, yeah, your first TV show. Yeah. Nerves are high. I can imagine. Yeah. Well, I've never but, been really in front of a camera like that before so so very it's like, like very intimate and very you know you can't every direction of cameras there well we put, when in, we first got told it wasn't it was sort of pitched like it was going to be sort of almost like a big brother thing where there wasn't going to be cameramen there was going to be like cameras in the roof just like so hidden. you didn't feel nervous yeah mm. and then when i got there on set there was just cameramen with <laughs> yeah. massive cameras. i'm going to say back hell. then they had the big cameras that they literally shoving yeah. your face and you couldn't get away from them yeah. yeah they were quite intimidating back then yeah but do you know what funny enough <laughs> you you relax very quickly because it's not like you're in front of a live audience. Yeah. Once you've done a couple of days there, you like you're just with your mates. Yeah. So I'm just you know you can easily just forget block, about block the cameras. them out and just talk yeah. to your friends. Basically. Well, that's what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. And so obviously I'm just doing what I've done every single day in my shop, like, mm. but just in in a different place with different people who I know now. Yeah. And just cameras watching me do it. Yeah. So you, I was very relaxed. In fact, funny enough, I think though. The, percep the misperception of the show is that because we're so comfortable yeah. that you're going to be great on like live shows. I'm yeah. fucking terrible on live shows. Honestly, oh. they put me in front of an audience. <laughs> I'm I'm quite like a little mouse. I'm like, because I've, I've, <laughs> I'm not like a, a brash character or anything. Yeah. So I think they think they see us having banter and stuff on Tattoo Fixers and that's when you're with your mates and you're comfortable, right? Yeah. So, and that, that is completely me. But I'm like that if I'm comfortable. If I'm... Mm in front of like an audience of 500 people yeah and i'm on like a talk like a talk show or whatever like i'm not that you, comfortable you do free i did the same i just freeze <laughs> yeah. you know and you just look at everyone and then that's it game yeah. over basically and so i'm not like a performer like mm. that you know so i'll just sit there and they'll ask me questions and i'll probably just give like boring answers yeah <laughs> boring answers to be honest and they'll be like fucking oh, hell he's yeah. boring he? <laughs> like very different on tattoo yeah. things. but it, yeah. it is a misconception like what you yeah. just said people assume that you yeah, know yeah. and it's just because you're with your friends and you're with people who you're comfortable with yeah that's purely what it is you know yeah but the filming was good like we filmed the pilot at mm. first it was a pilot episode so that was gonna like a taster or yeah. test <clears throat> kind but of thing but that was gonna go mm. out as a taster to see mm. if how the audience reacted to it but we and we filmed that for a week. Yeah, so not and too long, I suppose. No, it wasn't too long, but it was mm. one episode that they were going to pitch to the channel as well and put out on for, as a one-off episode to see how it worked. But we did the week's worth of filming. I think it was in like September, October. It was around November time, maybe. Yeah. Around those months, I can't remember. Yeah. Um. And what year was this? I'm trying to think. Oh God, uh, I was 24. So, so about what 2014. 
Yeah, 2014, yeah. I filmed the pilot. It was around then, wasn't it? Something like I that, I remember yeah. vaguely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we filmed that. And then they didn't even put it out. I think they just loved it. So yeah. they just commissioned it straight away to be a series before yeah. it even went out. And, and just pushed it out and yeah, that so was it. Yeah, so then it went back in the, like, I think it was like the April time. Yeah, it was because I turned 25. It was my birthday on the first season. Yeah. <clears throat> so we started filming the se- the series in April and it went out in like the June. Oh, wow. Very yeah. soon then, for yeah. sure. Very quick turnaround from yeah. the filming the pilot back in the, like in the last few months of the year before mm. to it turn around to a full series. Yeah. I mean, the yeah. full series was like taking two, three months to film. Oh, wow. Yeah. So then, yeah. And I mean, I had no idea it was going to be as big as it was. Just Yeah. I was going to say, what were your initial thoughts, you know, to, to that? Did you think, oh, it, it might do well, it might not? Well, uh, yeah. I mean, something just, might not come new, of it, it, but it's promotion. Yeah. Worst case scenario. Yeah. If it doesn't well, take either off. way, it was always something to say, you know, I've if I ever this. just was just going to go back to me shop and tattoo, it was always just something to go, well, I was on TV once, you know, mm-hmm. as a tattoo artist doing tattooing. So, which I always thought was cool mm-hmm. to say. But, um, I didn't expect it to be as big as it was. It was massive. It went massive, and yeah, it was crazy. And what was that like for yourself? Like suddenly being thrown into, I guess, a limelight. Crazy. You know, crazy because I'm yeah. st- just a normal guy. Like, yeah. <laughs> so you, you just fight, a normal like, person, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like you know, and suddenly people stare at you and come up to you all the time. Mm. And like at one point, I mean, when it was bit, when it was at its peak in like the yeah. second to third season, I mean, I don't know what it's like to be an A lister, but. Being a Z lister was pretty yeah, tough. That, that was enough. Yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah. I'm not joking. like I couldn't. At one point, I couldn't go anywhere. Like really, I couldn't yeah. go anywhere. Like like I want. I want. I remember thinking once, I just want to go into town and get a new pair of jeans. And yeah. I cannot <laughs> just go into town. And you like security around you? Absolutely hounded. Yeah. yeah, like I couldn't go anywhere. And it was it was all nice stuff, so yeah. it was good. But if you just need to go and do something quickly, you can't do it's it. It's not quick. Mm. It's like I'd have to bring people with me, like you know, just to be like. And did you have to like hire any security, or did you just no, I didn't rely have to ha- on your friends? No, my mates and are, yeah, my mates are, I've got security companies anyway, so my mates are all big lads anyway. So yeah, so you didn't have to worry about <laughs> no, that. I didn't no, have to worry about anything like that. But yeah, you felt safe, and like yeah, no one yeah. was gonna like approach you or get well, into your personal space. Or oh, people get much. into your personal space. Oh, would that? Oh, people oh. get into your personal <laughs> space. Yeah, I mean, I turn around to the wall, step back a bit. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it was. It was crazy, like yeah, it was interesting. It was just a new world for me, completely, just a completely yeah. new world. And then, and how did you take to that? Did you love it? Was it too much sometimes, or was it like an in between emotion? Um, I, a bit, yeah, in between. I didn't. Mm. I've never hated it, you yeah. Know? But it can be a lot, you know. I, I'm a very patient person, really. So yeah. But I, do, do you know what? It's only no one's ever been rude. So it's, yeah. it's only if people were rude to me. I'm nice and kind to everybody that yeah. I meet. Like I've never been off with anyone or funny with anyone. No one's ever. I've never said no to any photograph. Nothing. Mm. But it's only if someone is funny with me that I'll be yeah. funny with them. Obviously. Yeah. Rude, but, arrogant. Yeah. That like kind but, of thing. it's very rare that that's ever happened because there's nothing to be rude about. Like it was. Yeah. A good, it was a good show. People yeah. loved it. Like people love tattoos. You know, they like my work. They come up to me. That's it, really. So no one was ever rude to me face anyway online yeah. maybe people give <laughs> a bit of shit but fuck them <laughs> well, well i was going to ask did, did you get like the whole as it's known as now trolling yeah yeah i've had that did, a few you, times or over was the it years, not yeah. very because some people don't get trolled i guess oh you know? yeah no no I've, 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 yeah at one point we got really <laughs> trolled really bad really yeah i can't imagine you getting trolled if i'm honest well because you're such a nice down-to-earth guy well, i'd like to think from, so you from know? what i've seen and just meeting you now you well, know i can you, pick that up do you, you know? know what though like in that world, it does not matter how nice you are, how sound you are. Like, yeah, there'll be someone who wants to give you a bit of shit because they just don't like that. They don't like that other people might like you as well. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, but I don't give a fuck about them. Yeah, like <laughs> fuck them. You know, like I'll other, second that as yeah, well. <laughs> fuck them. I don't give a shit. Like, I, I actually fucking like it a bit. To be honest, mm. I like having a bit of back and forth with them. To be honest, yeah, <laughs> because I don't, I don't take anything personally. Yeah. Like, Say what you want about me. Do you know what I mean? I don't give a fuck. I it, really it's don't like care. that saying, isn't it? Um, kill them with kindness. Yeah. That, that's the best thing you can I do in that situation. I just agree with them. If they give me shit to say anything about the way I look, I just go, yeah, I know. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. they hate that. So yeah. you're you're doing the right thing. Yeah, you know? they, you're just being yourself and being kind. Yeah, you I just, know? just agree with them. Like, it's tr- yeah. like, I just say it's true what you're going to do now. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're right, uh, mate. Then, you're and right. And then like, stutter like, you're all right. And what now? Exactly. So yeah, but yeah, we got it bad at one point. <clears throat> um, yeah, the tattoo industry 
hated tattoo fixers. I just really? didn't like it. Yeah, they just didn't like it. Um, yeah, at one point they were selling T-shirts at tattoo conventions saying "fuck tattoo fixers." That's or something crazy. Like, was it saying "fuck tattoo fixers"? Yeah, "fuck tattoo fixers" or something that, like that. And um, I remember when it came out, and people were flapping about it, and I was just mm. like, "Can I not wear one of them T-shirts on the show yeah. now? <laughs> I'll just wear it." Yeah, like, wear it proud. Yeah, f- yeah. fucking right. I either wore it, <laughs> put it on, I'll wear yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, that, that would have been brilliant. <laughs> It, it's hard to imagine because um, I, I was in university at the time when it when it aired, I believe. Yeah. And everyone I like everyone I spoke to watched the show at the time. Yeah. It was massive, like like you've just said. Yeah. And no one that I ever spoke to had a bad word to say about it. No. So I can't believe there was that going on on the sidelines. Oh, yeah, it, it's yeah. hard to believe, you yeah. know. Yeah. Some of the comments. <laughs> some of the comments. <laughs> and I ended up doing this show right. I was off, off the back of Tattoo because I ended up doing a show called uh, E4's Tattoo Artist of the Year where I was a yeah. judge on it with uh, a friend of mine, Rose Hardy. I think She's, I might have seen that as well. Yeah, so yeah. I ended up being a judge. The shit I got for that was unreal. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen so the comments worse, on that. that was even worse, was it? Oh, oh that was, I mean, I thought, okay, well, this, is, this is the worst I've probably ever had it. Really? <laughs> oh, God, some of the comments were just ruthless. Yeah. yeah. But it's just, no, it's funny, isn't it? You got to laugh, up, don't you? You got to laugh. Oh, I'll laugh. I'll, I'll, mm. I'll, I'll go in hard, me. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> fucking right. Yeah, <laughs> best yeah. way to be, yeah, Jeff. Yeah, fuck it. Like, yeah, it's what it is, isn't it? I'm still gonna do it. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. Don't, don't let it stop you. If, if that was a good experience and you enjoyed it, I'm enjoyed having it, fun. That, that's what matters. Listen, at the end I'm of the day. having fun. I'm gonna do what I want to do, and if you don't like it, I can go fuck. I'm still gonna <laughs> exactly. do it. Like, yeah, exactly. You know, well, I I love the show because um, I believe you did it with uh, Sketch and Alice. Yeah. 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 How was they like to work with? Was oh, like yeah, amazing. Luckily, we just clicked. Yeah. You know, the first season there was a different girl on it. Uh, Lou was on the first season. Yes, that's right. And I, yeah. So when I first did Tattoo Fix, we literally just never met before any of us. So we oh, met really? the night before we started filming in, in like a pub with all the crew and stuff like that. Really? And that's how you met and first. That was the first time we ever met. First spoke. conversation. Yeah. And did you click with them both straight away? Straight away, yeah. Yeah. Straight away. And um, the funny thing was, the, the weird thing about it was, we were all just normal tattoo yeah. artists and obviously had our own different lives, but we all shared the same weird thing, which was getting thrown into the limelight. So Sketch's experience was the same as mine. Lou's, yeah. Alice, when she came in, we'd all experienced, this, you know, we're all in doing the same thing and we're in it together. So if we all got shit, we're all getting shit together, yeah. you know? So we, through that, we formed a really good bond as well. Mm. And like I said, we were there together every day and luckily our chemistry and our banter was all the same. Mm. So, yeah, we just it was so lucky that they just so, so there wasn't clicked. just That's your colleagues, there were your friends yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 like like we were like best mates. Mm. We still are. We all still talk. Like we're all oh, still amazing. really close. Like so. Yeah. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's wicked. We're at you, know, you watch that show and people think, are you actually that good? Yeah, we are actually good mates. Mm. Like, I, I could tell that. Yeah, could, it was real. You could see you know? the chemistry on on screen. I thought, if I'm yeah. honest, you yeah. could tell. There were genuine friendships there. Yeah, yeah. I could tell that. Well, it's, you know? it was that genuine that people thought we'd been mates for years. Yeah, but exactly. That's that's what I thought yeah. as well. So yeah. I wonder, I wonder how they met. You know, yeah. did they knew, knew each other beforehand, or you no. know, because it does make you wonder. And that's because, so lucky, isn't it? When you yeah. think you just put four random people together, and you know, it, it just works like that. So it was just, yeah, it was lucky, really, really yeah. lucky. And then, I mean, when Alice came in, that was just like that took it to gold level because yeah. she's just so funny. Like, yeah, because I, I remember when Alice were on as well. That yeah. was a very good series, yeah, few she, series. Yeah, she, she, I mean, she came <clears> in the second series and she was on it right the <clears> way through. But like, she, um, she was like, it was almost like we didn't know there was a missing link until she came in. Yeah, and then I think that's just what elevated Tattoo Fixers to the next level. Really, and got yeah. it even more exposure, yeah, more then, series, that yeah, kind of thing. Because there was mm. a lot more. She's just very funny. Yeah. naturally very funny like who you see on there is like that's exactly who she is yeah so she's a right character so yeah we all just i mean she came out with some fucking match. she still does <laughs> yeah. weird shit yeah and you know that's why it's funny so it, yeah it worked really well but that's what in. you need around every sort of like work you know operation like you need banter you need to all get on you know yeah. you need that skill obviously yeah <laughs> you know I always remember the uh, receptionist as well. Remind me of yeah, 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 love her. Yeah, absolutely love her. <laughs> I just have to throw that out. There. Absolutely love her to this day. Yeah. She, some of the things she'd say would crack me up. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, I, I, she just felt like she were a part of the team. You know, yeah, well, yeah. she were a part of the team. Well, yeah, like I said, the four of us were just put together, and it just it just worked. So we're yeah. really lucky that way. 
Amazing. Mm. So what were some of the best tattoos you've tattooed on the show? What what one stands out to you to this day? <sighs> You know I, think it, it, it I think I did longer. that. That's my piece of art. <laughs> you know, I did that, you know. Do you know what's funny? Like, I I can't even remember. Like, there's so many. Really? I've been tattooed so many people on there that I can't even remember what I did on there anymore mm. until I come back. And I, I, do you know what? I've watched Tattoo Fixers back, right? Yeah. <laughs> and completely forgot who that person is that I've tattooed. I didn't even know I was tattooed. I was watching it thinking, I wonder, who did she pick? Yeah. <laughs> and it was me. Yeah. And I spent the whole day with her and tattooed her. And I look at the tattoo and go, oh, God, I don't even yeah. remember like, doing like that. Like, did we meet? Did we have a conversation? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. So, um, so it was a bit of a blur, all of it, in yeah, a way. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. now, like, I mean, I've left it, what, like five years ago, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it feels such a long time ago that does now to me. Mm. But, you know, I've still got great memories. Favourite tattoo? Let me think. To, for me, the most, it's the most meaningful ones. I did all like yeah. the portraits and stuff on there, so. Yeah, because you, you're known as a portrait artist. Yeah, more realism than, stuff. Y- yeah, yeah, yeah. All the portraits, so. Mm. But, you know, there's a few on there, a few different ones, but yeah. for me, and, I, and this is still my day-to-day tattoo, and when people have meaningful tattoos, yeah, and they look in the mirror and they, like, they're upset, they get they cry, because, luckily, because mm. they like it, not because they hate it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> That's 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 yeah. the be- that the job doesn't get any better than that for me. So exactly. there was a few of that on. T- I mean, the show was all about the stories, isn't it? So mm. some are funny, some are sad, but you know, the, they the one- they were the ones that stood out to you personally. Oh, yeah. The the ones that meant yeah. you know emotions to people. Yeah, hundred you know, percent. And yeah. meant the most to them. Yeah, you know. because the 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 personal the ones. One I thing guess. about tattooing is that it's so intimate and personal. Like yeah, and I mean whoever you've been tattooed by, like, you'll never forget that person because yeah. you will always have that tattoo to look back and it'll take you back to that memory of getting tattooed and you'll remember that person. Yeah. So when I tattoo someone, they're always, I'm a part of their life. At yeah. some point, I was a part of their life. Exactly. I mean, I've, I've got quite a few tattoos myself. I've got about 12, roughly, I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I've had them all done by the same tattoo artist and yeah. still in touch with him to this day. Yeah. So I've had been getting tattoos for, I'm 27 now, so since I were about... 17 yeah so that many years illegal, illegal. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean 18 Don't i mean 18 me <laughs> uh, uh, yeah cut that i mean 18 i never said 17 yeah. <laughs> but 18 18 but um yeah like we've never lost touch and um we have that like chemistry like we're, we're good friends to this day That's and good. it's very true what you say you never forget your tattoo artist yeah. and i always know. found that a big part of um repeat custom was getting on with your tattoo yeah. artist you know yeah because i know there's a there's a lot of tattoo artists who don't even speak to their customers they put headphones in and they don't chat don't nothing that, yeah that's strange, so that for me it? like people it, this is a business thing in general but mm. people buy into people yeah so like and with tattooing it's you know it's quite intimidating getting a tattoo because for most people especially if you're getting the first tattoo and you've never had one before because you think about the pain you're worried about mm. the pain can i sit for it you know, I don't want to be embarrassed. I will yeah. pass out, you know, like all <laughs> I don't sorts. want to walk out and all yeah, that. Yeah, like, So it's yeah. nerve wracking for a lot of people. So mm. my thing is that you've got to make people feel comfortable. Yeah. To at least give them a chance of getting through it. Yeah. Especially if they're really nervous. So like your relationships with, you, with your clients is so important. Mm. And once you have that and they've had a great experience and a great time and, you know, I just, well, I'm just me. Back. I'm just like this with yeah. all my, my clients. So, they want to come back because they've had a good experience. They've loved it. Like, we have people coming to the shop just because they just want to spend the day there. Like, yeah. so I get another tattoo because I like being around, like, the banter and it's just fun. It's it's almost yeah. like a day off from it, from reality for them because mm. getting tattooed is different as well. It's not like something you do in your everyday life. Mm. And at the end of the day, you come away with something that looks amazing as well, so. Yeah, and something that's personal to yourself. Yeah, that, that you can carry forever. Of. So yeah. people love it. Because it's on your body for life. Yeah. So it's something you look back on and think... Something that you've got on your body for life. You think back to who did it for you, and yeah. that's that's a memory. Yeah, you know? that's it. Yeah. So you're creating memories, creating memories for people. Yeah. Very people good memories. People never forget me. <laughs> <laughs> and we're actually going to ask what are some of your methods to make pe- your customers feel at ease. I guess. Do you know what? I, I'm just a relaxed guy. Like, I'm, yeah. and I'm always up for a laugh. Like, I'm always trying, like, trying to, you know. I think just see, especially now because of the TV thing. Some people know me, only know me from that. Like, yeah. So. Some of my clients travel from all over. I mean, wow. different, some other people come from different countries yeah. just to get tattooed by me because they've seen tattoos and they just want to be tattooed by me. Mm. So sometimes they walk in and they're, they're just automatically nervous. Yeah. So Oh, bless them. Yeah, <laughs> but I will talk to them like they're my mate. Yeah. You know, and within a couple of 
seconds they feel totally relaxed because I'm just talking to them like normal because they will have a perception of what you're going to be like when yeah. they meet you in person mm. you know you, if you meet someone that you've seen off telly you, you wonder if is that really them or are they going to be And because you, you hear story, stories don't you about someone being a knobhead or yeah and you think are rude. they going to be that way are they going to be how they are on TV yeah. like you don't know what you're going to you get know. kind of thing but that is me mm. like mm. what you see on telly fixes is me so when you come to the shop you're just going to be with me so that's like good. that's really good so though. people just feel yeah. chilled and they love it like so yeah. I always have a great great time with my customers every, yeah you know and, yeah. and at the end of the day i'm i'm gonna spend eight hours with someone practically mm. i want to have a good time as well exactly <laughs> like it's there. about your experience no. as well just yeah, as much fine. you know my yeah. day as well i don't even think you know yeah because i've had plenty of those over the years yeah I think, oh god i got him in again today yeah because i was gonna say are there any like difficult clients you've oh, had yeah. that you just think i'd never want to tattoo them ever again oh yeah you know? have you had quite a few uh, I, I do you know what? I, not for years, mm. not for years. But yeah, I've had more to... earlier on in your career. Oh yeah, because you thing. tattoo anyone. Like mm. at the time when you're learning tattoo, I'd just tattoo anyone and do anything. Yeah, like just to make money. Like, yeah, you know, exactly. So pretty much doing anything that anyone asks for. So, um, yeah, and with that comes with just. T- I mean, the in the early days, it's people come in and they're trying to bargain the price for a tattoo, which I never understand because it's a permanent thing forever. Yeah. And like, will you do it for 50, 50 quid? No, mate. No. <laughs> oh, the door, do no, they? Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, God, I've got some stories about... 50 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> I just think, what is going through your head? Like, I, no. <laughs> I remember this person coming in and asked ask me years ago for a tattoo. They'd drawn it himself. By the way, it was shit as well. Yeah. <laughs> and like, So I was going to have to redraw it as well. Yeah. It's only a tiny little thing. Mm. But she thought it was the bollocks and it wasn't. Oh, God. And then she was like, how much would that be? And I was like, that'd be 20 quid. It was a tiny little thing. Yeah. And she went, 20 quid? And I was like... <laughs> and she was like, uh, you'll do it cheaper down the road. And I'd, I've got a sign in my shop that says, good tattoos aren't cheap and cheap tattoos aren't good. Yeah. And I said, read the sign. And yeah. she went... I said, and uh, I said, you can go down the road if you want. And her husband went, we fucking will. <laughs> and, and then they just yeah. went. I'm thinking, I said twenty quid, right? Yeah, like, <laughs> that's as cheap as you can get. I mean, for ta- as what, cheap as so, possible. Like, what? What are you looking for? A free beer? Like, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah. By the sounds of things, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've had that a few times. So yeah. that's one of the most weirdest memories, I guess, that you've had in your career. That's not even the weirdest. That is nothing. Oh, you've got that, to tell us the weirdest oh, now. The weirdest. <laughs> Like, Ooh. if if there's even one possibly weird as that. <laughs> uh, th- the thing is, I'm wondering if I can, <laughs> if I can put this out there. You, you can say whatever you well, want. I know, yeah, yeah, I, can't, yeah. I, know, okay. <laughs> I don't want this yeah. to lead people to remember. No, no say, say whatever you're comfortable oh, with, Jay, it's fine. I'm, try- I'm trying to think. I mean, I've got some mad stories that cannot yeah. leave. Well, we could always come back to this if you need time to think. We can do, if you, you know, because like, I really want to hear this. I uh, do. <laughs> I mean, there's plenty. Yeah, th- th- yeah. Let's let's come back to it. Yeah, we'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so moving on from that, who's uh, the biggest, I guess, person you've ever tattooed? Like, it could be a celebrity, it could be someone who's known, I guess, someone um, who you're really proud to say I tattooed them. I mean, I'm proud to. T- do you know what? I'm proud to tattoo anyone. Like, mm. I don't, it's not, a, there's no one I'm like, I'm proud to tell you. I, like, I'm tattoo anyone. Yeah. And as long as my clients are nice. Yeah. I'm proud and respectful. to tattoo anyone. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I don't tattoo people who are disrespectful. If someone was mm. disrespectful, I just have to go home. Yeah. Like, I just don't, no, you're not getting tattooed here. It's as simple as that. Yeah. That's you got to find th- another studio or yeah, something. That is yeah. the thing about tattooing, to be honest. That's one thing I learned about, because I worked in Asda. Mm. And uh, the motto there was happy to help. And when I got yeah. to the tattoo studio, I realised yeah it's not the same here yeah. <laughs> it's like don't like it for <laughs> yeah yeah exactly like you can't really say that in asda i suppose you've got to no, kind of bite your tongue in a way don't oh, you oh, you know well you'd be getting sacked if you said fuck off yeah exactly <laughs> whereas it's your studio you yeah. can say what you want to them the then beans? you know fuck off. yeah <laughs> <laughs> like jay you're fired <laughs> oh, just go away. not good uh, customer service no there. no no <laughs> but so, you, yeah. you say it in your head but obviously yeah. With, but it was different your, when the yeah. tattoo shop, like, it wasn't like that. Like, it was just like, if if people just got... It's weird because when you're tattooing someone, you're sticking a needle in their arm, right? Yeah. And it hurts. And I'm and, in and control of that. And some people have very low pain <laughs> yeah. thresholds as yeah. well. And mm. I'm in control of that level yeah. of pain. Like, you know, like, so to try and piss off your tattooist makes no sense to me at all. They'll just, you know, jab you a bit. <laughs> Surely you want a good rapport with the tattoo artist because yeah. I'm about to mark your skin for life as well. Yeah. Like, so, they'll either do it as painless as possible or you'll just go for it, yeah. you know? 
the choice is yours. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'd say. Yeah, and I, I, I remember I worked with a tattoo artist. The tattooist had been tattooing for like 30 years. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> he waited for like 30 years. And he, I remember in the first um, few weeks of me like learning to tattoo, mm. he used to tell me that he'd hide cocks in people's tattoos. <laughs> I know. And I was like, sure. Up. And he was like, no. And he showed me his portfolio. Yeah. And he'd like go, look, cock. And it, it was nothing obvious, but once you saw it, you couldn't unsee it. Yeah. So, so like there'd be like... a rose and the centre of it would look like a bell end. And you'd be like, oh my God. And you'd just flick through his book and go, look, cock. And you'd have to cock. keep a straight face. No, 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 no. I was like, oh, God. I just couldn't believe that he'd, he'd done that. I'd be in shock. Yeah. So like, he was like you've been time for 30 years. He just oh. didn't care. <laughs> I oh, was that's like, what? funny. Wow. Well, I was going to ask but, what's yeah. the funniest moment, so. but I guess that's up there, isn't it? So don't piss off your tattooist. That's yeah. all I'm saying. No, I definitely don't need to ask what's the funniest now. I think that's up there. Yes, yeah. There's a few. So have you um, tattooed any celebrities or anyone in the public eye? Yeah, so I've tattooed quite a few. I've tattooed um, Kerry Katona. Yeah. Katie Price. Yeah. Danny Ings, who at the time he was playing for Liverpool, played for, I think he plays for, is it Aston Villa the, or West Ham now? The name rings a bell, I think. Yeah, I've, Danny yeah. Ings, um, he's a really nice lad. Mm. Um, Jamie Lang from Aiden Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who else? Do you know what though? It's like, I always say, you're only a celebrity to people who think you are. Yeah. It's a perception at the end of the day. Like if yeah. you don't watch Tattoo Fixers, you wouldn't know who I am. You wouldn't know me if you fell over me. Like mm. if you're not a football fan, you wouldn't know who... Danny Ings was, yeah, like, you know, yeah. you wouldn't know the, you know, so, but if you're a mad football fan, you'd know exactly who Danny yeah, Ings is. Yeah, exactly. Like, so you'd be either be starstruck or you won't, if, depending on if you're a fan or not. Exactly. So if you don't watch someone's show, you're not you going to know who they are. You're not a celebrity are. to them. It's like, you're a normal um, person, which some people, everyone is. Some people don't follow football yeah. and don't know who a lot of football players are, but yeah. some people are yeah. the most famous yeah. person in the world. Like some you people know. be absolutely starstruck. Yeah. And other people go, who's that? It, it, yeah, exactly. Like, you know? Yeah. So you're only a celebrity thing. The whole celebrity thing is just a perception. To, yeah. Like, you, everyone's just a human being. Yeah. That, that's why I like to say <clears throat> known, I guess. Yeah. Like known. Because yeah. Because people can be known, but a celebrity like what you've just said, it's yeah. down to the individual. Yeah. The celebrity or not you know yeah yeah because you've either heard of that person or you haven't yeah you know? that's it yeah so um yeah i've talked with a lot of people who are in the public eye mm. over the years yeah fun amazing yeah so tell us a bit more about your studio because i guess from tattoo fixers that might have brought different opportunities obviously money yeah um did you open your studio straight after filming or was it no i opened a it when i was after? 21 so I've, I've just went back to, to my to, tattoo studio yeah so yeah it's funny because uh, once I've finished with tattoo fixers, people used to say to me, so what do you do now? I'm like, I'm still a tattooist, mate. I've always been one. <laughs> yeah, like, I'm going to... Yeah, I'm exactly. doing tattooing on telly. Like, what yeah, I'm, I've not like... Do you mean what do I do now? The same thing I'm, you know yeah, me for. Yeah. Like, like I've not gained a new skill or a yeah. new job or anything. Yeah, like, I'm a chef, you know. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I've become a chef a now. <laughs> Low profile you know? now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but obviously as a result of tattoo fixers, that's... Loads of opportunities and... rolled in, I imagine, after yeah, that. I different mean, ones. Yeah, I the, a lot of opportunities came, but I've turned a lot of things down as well, yeah. like, because they just don't align with who I am. Yeah, and, and is know, it like different career paths? Different TV shows and, and stuff, which yeah. you know would lead me down different roads and different paths. And to be honest... And you think that's not me? Not no. me at all, but like, you know, money gets flashed in your face and I've just turned it down. Yeah, because and that's I'm how just, they lure you in, I guess, don't well, they? Yeah, you, you know, know, like, this is how a lot of people, that's what I was saying, going back to what we were saying before, a lot of people get lured in by that, the yeah. big numbers put in your face, and a lot of people are drawn in to that. Mm. Um, but I said no to it. And I would, pro you know, I'd probably be in a much better financial position now if I'd have said yeah. Yeah. But I'd have sold me soul for that, and I'm not willing to do that for any kind yeah, of money. Yeah, so exactly. I'd rather be skinned. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. You know, you've got to stick to your craft and what you have a love for and a passion you for. You can't. You know. Once you sell your soul, you can't get it back. Yeah. And it, or it's very, I mean, I don't... Very well, difficult. It's very to... difficult to change people's perception of you once you've sold your soul for money. Yeah. For money, I think, you know, for a bit of money, like money, yeah. money comes and goes. Like It you know, does. It, it just does, you know. And I understand that, you know, people need money and they're desperate for it. But I, you know, I would honestly rather be skint than, yeah. than people... And, and do something, something you not. love, then something you hear and get a load of money yeah. for it. Yeah. I mean, I, when I got into tattooing, I remember thinking, I w at the time, I mean, 
mm. obviously you need money but like I, at the time i'm thinking i would do this for free yeah and i did a lot of tattoos for free mm. um to to build up but the then, portfolio and everything yeah, yeah but i remember thinking i like the money i was on in asda at the time was a few hundred quid a month i was thinking i would just do this for that mm. I'd rather be here for so many more hours, more yeah. days a week on the same money just because I love this job. Mm. And there's a lot to be said for that because a lot of people think that success is about how much money you have. And I think success is about how happy you are in life. Yeah, because at the end of someone's life, you don't look back and think how much money you've made. No. You look back and think, I've done something I've loved. Yeah. I've achieved a fulfilling life yeah. and I'm happy with every decision I've made yeah. and where I'm at to this day at the end of my life yeah. when I leave this world yeah. I'm happy with the life I've lived yeah. and I've not chased money and greed no. not become unhappy through that yeah. and I've you know I've had a happy fulfilling life yeah, I, I, I feel like that's what everyone strives yeah. towards I guess I saw you know? this guy talking on online the other day and he was saying that he's been to two people's bedsides when they're about to die Yeah, and they both said the same thing about when they look back at their life all that ever mattered was the relationships they had with people Yeah, nothing else they don't think talk about the job they had they don't talk about the success they've had. The money, all they talk all, all that about. The most thing. important thing they say that they think of when they think about now their whole life was who was in their life and the yeah. relationships they had, and that is the truth. Yeah, because you can't take the money with you. No, like you really can't. Like, it, it doesn't once you're matter. Gone, you're gone. It's just. It doesn't matter who's a millionaire, billionaire, who's you know? got one pound in the back uh, bank account or a yeah. million. It doesn't matter. Once you, your house yeah. you've got will be someone else's house. house. Exactly. Like, it doesn't like, go with you. No. You know, it, Someone else will live in that house. It'll be like you never lived there. Yeah, exactly. You've your house your whole life. You've worked your ass off to carry it. And you've, you've screwed yourself every month to try and pay the bills for it. And you're stressed the fuck about it. Yeah. That house will be someone else's and no exactly. one will ever know you existed there. 100%. Like, and material things don't follow you no, as well. They don't. They, they'll That's just it. get sold. and You literally take you know, nothing with you. So... All that does matter is the relationships you have with people. Yeah, your loved it. ones. Yeah, and I mean, obviously you need money, so try and work as hard as you can to, to make the best out of what you can out of your life. But don't fully chase that. Well, mm. I mean, working towards something and having a goal, obviously, like, you know, I think, you know, I'd love to be financially free for me and my family to be fi financially free. So there's not the burden of that, you know, yeah. hovering over you all the time, which everybody yeah. has, right? Yeah. But... Are you still, if you can live a comfortable life, just even if you're just getting by, yeah. you know, you see some people, some people are so happy and they've got absolutely nothing. Mm. Like they've got no, they, they're skint, but they, they're just happy yeah. because they love like being around the people they're with. And exactly. you've got, you've got people who've got so much money and they're stressed because they've, and, and they're miserable. And it goes back yeah. to the character thing. They portray the lifestyle to everybody that they now have to live up to. Yeah. Because if you were to like, sell your fancy cars and your fancy house and your yacht or whatever it is that you've got and you you know scale things down people think well stop thinking you're a failure because you yeah. built yourself up to that yeah that thing exactly right? and then it's too late to go back yeah mm -hmm. and you know so and then the the lonely the miserable they've got all this money but yeah. no one share it with no you know and people don't understand like just be grateful for what you got yeah like and i don't think have. people and this is for anyone I don't think people realise this until they get older. They don't. Kids kind of, and young people chase wealth and money and they think that's the be all and end all of happiness when it isn't. Oh yeah, this generation you know, now, this younger generation, like, like all I ever see online is money, chipped, this money, yeah. that money. That, and I'm like, I've seen it as well. It's like, it's, this, it's crazy. <laughs> like that, that, that all they talk about is how much more money they've got than each other. And it's like, yeah, and they're hey, not even passionate about what they're doing to get the money uh, as well. Just, and you know, the, you, we're breathing a generation of, of people that don't want to work. They just yeah. want it, they want the easy route all the time, which yeah. means they don't have any resilience. And they when don't things get have difficult. a lot of work ethic no. as well, and no drive or passion for yeah. anything. Just earning the most money. What's as the possible. easiest way to make money? And then, like you know, mm. you don't really hear many, or maybe you do, like in personal life, but online, you all that's bashed into you, these kids is like you know you've got to be earning this much at a certain age. And, also, and it's actually, it's misleading because not everyone's capable of being a millionaire. I don't exactly. care what anyone says. Everyone goes, anyone mm -hmm. could be a millionaire. No, they can't. No. no, they can't. Some people just don't have the mentality it's to do it. That's all right. It's why either with you or it's not. Yeah. Exactly. You it's, know. But it's all right. Like, it, it, it's not okay not to have just that. Just because yeah. you can't become a millionaire or because you haven't got the, the intelligence to do certain things to maybe make you a millionaire. That's mm -hmm. not a bad thing. 
you yeah. can still be happy. Yeah, exactly. On minimum wage. Yeah, like, you can still have a happy, fulfilling but, life. Yeah, but people are getting mm. too caught up in that. I've got to do this because if he's doing this and I look like I haven't got as much as him, so I must be a failure. Oh, it's just fuck. Yeah. Just get over it. Like, just... and, and that's why probably so many younger people now struggle with the mental health because they think yeah. I need to be where that person is yeah. and they're the same age as me, you yeah. know. So I've got to have this and th- this equals happiness. It really doesn't. You and know? you know what? I, seen, I saw a clip months ago of some lad who was like i think he was like 23 some youtuber yeah saying if you're a lad and you're 21 you haven't got a lambo then you're a bum and i thought oh my god shut up you gimp like seriously i mean like, if i on. were a guy i'd want to punch him in the face like, personally shut up, you muppet. like <laughs> yeah seriously like and it's it's wrong because you've got like young lads who are like i've got cousins like who are yeah. 18 19 just finding their way in the world, trying to find their feet. Yeah, don't, and figure themselves yeah, out, like, like, like what you did. Yeah, you know? like, yeah, I didn't know a clue what I wanted to do when I was, until I was like 17, yeah. 18. You know, when you're that, and you're hearing other lads like saying this shit to you, like it's, it, it, it's provoking, it would be knocking them. It's I think. like, like yeah. it's not helping them. Mm. You're not, not everyone gets driven by that. Not everyone's got the mentality to be driven by that. Some mm. people, it will really get them down. If anything, know? that'll upset and really dishearten a lot yeah, of people yeah. rather than yeah. motivate them to want to you know, get this, get that. If anything, it'll do the exact opposite, yeah. I think, you know. Yeah. It's just, it's just a weird world we live it, in at the minute. It is very strange. Like when I was 18, 19, up, up until 21, I, I weren't thinking, oh, I need to have this to be, you know, successful. I need to have this. I need to chase money, do this, do yeah. that. Like, I think there's too much pressure put on young people these days, if I'm honest. More yeah. than what there ever has been, like, Costs are going up. We've been through COVID, obviously, which hasn't helped. Mm. Um, cost of living crisis, you know, the list goes on and on. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I think that hasn't helped. And people are, young people are putting pressure on themselves now more than ever, you know, yeah. whereas we didn't really have the, the pressures and social media and that sort of shoved in our face when we yeah. were that age, I suppose. Social you know? media is the one. It's like, it's, it's a tool. And it, mm. if, you, if you use it as a tool, it's amazing. Yeah. But... People are starting to become to like live their lives through it. It's almost like that. That's their reality, and yeah. reality is their fake world. Yeah. Because they. Per- the social media is fake. Oh yeah. They, Everyone. They, yeah. They, it's like they become an avatar. They yeah. step into that phone, and this is who they are. Mm. And then they come out of it. They won't be like that yeah. in public because exactly. they're too embarrassed. Because the face-to-face stuff yeah. is much more difficult to deal with than a on oh, like that. And you yeah. you're not seeing people's reactions to it. Mm. So they being characters. A lot of people online. Yeah, and then in person, they might be a, a lot more different. introverted yeah, or yeah. quieter or a bit more um, yeah. standoffish. And Whereas it, online, they may come across as the most confident person in the world. Exactly, you know? you know, and it's just, it's given this perception to people that, mm. you know. It's like ev- a false pretense Everyone's almost. competing with each mm. other. Like, I mean, everyone's competing with each other to try and get somewhere in life, but it's extreme like to the point mm. where it's it's it's, it's ridiculous it's warping people's minds yeah the worst case scenario almost isn't it one uh, extreme to the next yeah. isn't it you know yeah, it's just so if you're spending too much time on your phone it's not good for you no it's not healthy get out of it mm. go outside yeah <laughs> no I, I i agree though yeah. i do you know that's that's something we had that these younger people don't they just glue to the phone tablet yeah i'm so glad i didn't grow up in this generation because i'll second that as well like we used Mm. to go home school we'd go out and play outside go out exactly play make games yeah go outside like you and i'd be like go outside and play you'd make your own entertainment wouldn't you yeah Yeah. you would you find things to make like just yeah it's a weird weird world yeah but people are losing resilience and Mm. that's you know life's tough and Mm. you need to be resilient throughout because you know no one's coming to save you so you need to be you need to be toughening up, you know. Yeah, to and be success strong. isn't going to land on your doorstep overnight. No, you've you've got, got to go out there and. You've got to go make things yeah. happen for yourself, you know, as much as you can. But, you know, I always go back to just, just, just don't sell your soul to do it. Don't pretend yeah. to be something you're not. Yeah, because I, I, I was going to ask what's your number one advice that you give to the younger generation yeah. to, with any, it, it can be any career, anything, just to motivate them to do exactly what you've said, I guess, you know. Yeah, I think just find what you're passionate about. Like, I can't, I do what I'm passionate about and that's yeah. why everything's worked for me. Like, Yeah, and that's where you are today. And, you know, people will yeah. say, yeah, but you're, you're a famous tattooist or whatever, but, yeah, but I wasn't. Yeah. I, I had to make <laughs> had to that happen. I had to start yeah. somewhere. And I had no, no, yeah. there was no, like, 
guarantee that any of that stuff I did was going to work. Off. Every time yeah. I did a tattoo, I would think, I just wanted to put out the best tattoo I could be. I wanted people to go, wow, look at that tattoo. Every time I did a tattoo. Yeah. My long-term goal was to try and build my business and my brand and stuff like that. But I didn't, there's no, I didn't have no route to TV. I didn't know I was going to get on TV and become no. a famous tattoo artist. But when I saw um, Kat Von D tattooing, I remember thinking, I'd love to do that. And I'd yeah. love to be a famous tattooist because I'm, just the way I looked them, I thought they're so cool. Yeah. Like that's such a, like, they are wicked. Like how much I looked up to them. Yeah. That was your biggest That was my dream to be time. that. Yeah. And I've achieved that. But yeah. To get to that, I didn't. There was no guarantee I was gonna get there. Yeah, I just exactly. had to believe I was gonna get there because I always did. Had to did. take the risk. Yeah, yeah, I had to do things. I had to work long hours. I used to just put all my effort into it, and the and only way I could do that was because I was passionate about it. Yeah. So if I wasn't, I wouldn't have put the same effort in, and I wouldn't be where I am. 100%. So my belief in myself and my passion is what got me there. Yeah. So if you're not passionate about something, like for me, I just think, and you, I mean, really passionate about something. Mm. Because you can't half ass anything. If you want to get to somewhere... You have to put the hard work you, in. You've got to be all in. Yeah. I was all in to tattooing. Like, I've worked seven days a week, two other jobs at the same time. Yeah. To build up to the point where I was getting good at tattooing, just so I could become a tattoo artist and be there full time. Mm. Just to be in the shop full time. Yeah. I had to work seven days a week to get good to be be there full time. Exactly. Then when I was there, it was like little steps. I didn't, like, think too far ahead. I'd just take little steps at a time. I wouldn't... I'd be like, what's the next thing I need to do? I want to just get a good reputation. I want to be better at this. I want to be better at black and grey. I want to be doing realism. I want to be. I want to get to a point where I'm tattooing portraits every day. That would be my dream, to just be in my shop tattooing portraits every day. And yeah. I'm, now I am. Yeah, it's you like know, that like, saying, isn't it? Um, love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah. You know, and it's very true. Yeah, I know? mean, it's hard work. It's mm-hmm. the, like, but I never looked for an easy way. Like, I... I always go the long route, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, you didn't try and cut corners, no, chop never cuts. tried to sh- cut Yeah. Cut, because, wait, like, I'll use the analogy of a tattoo, right? Yeah. And it, the same principle applies to what I'm just saying there. But if I was to cut corners on the process of creating a tattoo, by the time I do the tattoo, that tattoo could be shit. Mm-hmm. And it won't it won't look good. Mm-hmm. Because I skipped a few things, you know, I've just done this quickly, or mm-hmm. I didn't put much effort into that. Mm-hmm. And... um that process would end up making the end result of the tattoo looking bad. Yeah. So I have to do be precise with everything I do in the build-up to actually get to the tattoo and then so the tattoo will be perfect. It's yeah. like, uh, what's that saying? Fail to prepare, prepare to fail or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's it, it's that's same, it. It is, you know? same rule applies. Yeah, you, you just know. gotta work hard towards what you're going for and just keep, stay focused and you just do it with tunnel vision. Exactly. And people it's funny a lot of younger people like to take shortcuts now and cut yeah. corners and it's it'll it'll never work yeah if you do it that way no and it's shutting out the noise of other people telling you like you, you're you're not going to be good enough like that or you shouldn't that someone says better than you or whatever like that you just have to shut that out yeah i've had it like, i've had people you know you'll never be, be as good as so and so you'll never do this you won't you'll do, never that. do that yeah you yeah. might do that but you won't be able to do that mm. okay but to be honest that just drives me that i've got that attitude to yeah. just be like we'll that's see. what motivates you i guess yeah. you know that's why i don't mind the trolling thing yeah. keep it coming <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah. but, but that's good because sometimes negativity can push a person yeah you know? so yeah. embrace everything embrace all angles as i said it just you know? is what it is just get just yeah you just gotta focus on yourself yeah. and not in a selfish way that doesn't mean shut off from everyone and yeah. not give a shit about anyone <laughs> yeah that doesn't mean that so don't <laughs> yeah do that. no one yeah no it, it's about just you've got to it's like when people say things, you've got to let it bounce off you. You've got to say, no, I'm, I'm going to like, believe in yourself. Mm-hmm. I know it sounds cheesy and stuff, but it's true. Like, it if I didn't believe true. that I could be where I am, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. That's a fact. That's exactly. just a fact. Exactly. And you put the hard work in, you had a passion for yeah. it, and you made it happen for yourself step by step. Yeah. And if someone says to you, like, oh, I don't think you'll be as good at that, and you let that go in, that and could be the fact that that ruined it for you. Yeah. Because if you start thinking, oh, God, maybe, maybe he's right, or... Maybe she's right or... Yeah. Because I think knocks are a part of life, to be honest. You can never yeah. have the straight and narrow and the positive. No. You have to take the the bad with the good, yeah. I guess. the highs you and know. lows of life. Like, and, exactly. You know, no matter how great life is, like, there's very bad parts of life and there's yeah. very good parts of life. And Life is one big roller coaster, as they say, yeah. up and down. I you think know. people are like, again, the whole perception of social media makes people believe that life is supposed to be you're supposed to be happy constantly yeah and that's 
Absolute which is a load, a load of shit because yeah. life happens and bad things happen and you know yeah you and if you aren't prepared to be able to, like you need to be strong and resilient and if you haven't built up those tools mm. over time you're going to buckle under the pressure and crumble when things go wrong yeah instead of overcoming it you know exactly. and forcing yourself through it like it's a bad time it's a rough patch whatever we're going to get through it that attitude get that's what i'm like but yeah. like i don't know many people who are exactly you and know. you're understanding that the bad can happen and you know think you yeah. can get knocks and that's just part of life it you know part of it. yeah you've got to accept that that's coming you know not everything works i've had so many things that haven't worked out for me mm. like pe- people just see that and think oh god yeah i've done that and it's successful so like there's been so many knocks along yeah. the way of exactly. things that haven't come off of things i've tried that haven't worked and, and i think that's a part of the growth with success yeah. is the not yeah it's it what makes you who you are today it's you know for when you get to the place you want to be the when the success the real success takes off mm. it makes it so much better yeah because you felt the lows of, of things and you got of, through those bad yeah, times of as the well. lows mm. of the things that didn't work or the, the failures you know yeah and it never held you back no or stopped you and that's the thing not letting it hold you back mm. it's it's very easy to go oh, maybe i'll just quit yeah but if you just never quit Mm. and you, you have that mindset of never quitting yeah well once mm. once you quit it's over yeah like, that's the guarantee it's it's done and then like, you have to find something new that well, you yeah. might not enjoy as much that's it you know the thing is once you quit it's over it, the guarantee yeah. is it's over the yeah. thing is if you never quit it still might happen yeah Maybe you've that got to be. try she'll never know yeah mm. and i think you know just you just gotta keep going yeah and what amazing hope. advice no yeah. i love that yeah no, i really enjoyed that yeah yeah that's the truth yeah no, I appreciate that, Jay. Sorry. Well, I guess, um, you know, sort of going back to what we said previously, have you thought of... Um, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? A weird story? Um, what was it? Can you remember <sighs> what it was, Mike? I can't remember how I worded it. Was weird it like stories. a... One of the weirdest um, tattoos, story you've had of... Um, <sighs> I try to think how I worded it. How did I... Weirdest client. Weirdest client, I guess. Yeah. Was that it? Do you know what? I feel bad. I, mean, I can't <laughs> no, name No, just do it. Anyone. Just, just um, out them. <laughs> don't say full names. I, do you know what? I'm trying to think though. There are stuff I can't. Like I've got really extreme ones that I, can't, I just can't repeat. What is it to? Yeah. Just it wouldn't be right. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. It just wouldn't be right to do that. Um, yeah. I guess one that's. Um... I'm trying to think. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'll tell, I'll tell you them off camera, but I, won't, I can't tell. Like, yeah. T- tell us, tell us a few off camera as well once we finish filming. <laughs> Right, what can I let me think? Anything at all. Uh, I'm trying to think. Um... There's so many extremes in tattooing that people don't know about. Yeah. So, like, so that's the thing. That's why it's so hard to tell people yeah. because you're like, <laughs> you say one extreme story, that person will know who that's about them. And I yeah. don't want to do that. To <laughs> yeah, someone. so you have to kind of yeah. <laughs> switch. Maybe, maybe not the full story in for a detail, then maybe just like a bit of a, a brief about it, I guess. Uh, well, I can tell this story about the guy I used to work with. Yeah, he, go ahead. I've told this before, but it's it's a good one. Yeah. He used to hate, pe- he'd been tattooing like 30 years and stuff, and he used to hate people bargaining for the price of a tattoo. Yeah, yeah. Like, like what we were saying earlier off. as yeah. well, it's annoying. Because like, he used yeah. to say, do you go to Asda and bargain for your shopping at the till? <laughs> no. So why, what makes yeah. it you coming in and bargain for the price of the tattoo? It D- doesn't make sense, so, does it? Yeah. Yeah, so... He told me this story about when he owned a shop. He he had this guy come in, and this guy wanted a unicorn on his arm. <laughs> I don't know. And um, he said, uh, the guy said, how much would that be? Be 80 quid, wasn't yeah. it? So, so he told Dylan the price, which obviously irritated him, because he was like, you're telling me the price of the tattoo that I'm doing on you. Yeah. So he was like, what did he say? No, that's a lie. He said, how much will it be? And Dylan said, 80 quid. And he said, do it for 60 and I'll have it, which annoyed him. <laughs> so <laughs> he said, all right, come through. And he brought the guy through and he tattooed it and he left a leg off it. Oh, brilliant. So he said, when you got the other 20 quid, I'll put the last leg on it. That's brilliant. That, that's so he how... did a three-legged unicorn on this guy because he said, Amazing. well, you've only got 60 quid, so you can have a three-legged unicorn. But I think but once it was on, yeah. That was it. Yeah, so he <laughs> had to come give back then and pay it. Quid, yeah. <laughs> See, that's the best way to get him to come back and pay the full price. Yeah, that's, I know. 
That's on quite there. smart, I think, actually. And who knows if he hit a cock in that tattoo or not? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like what we were saying earlier, gosh, that story. I'm still thinking about it now. <laughs> I'm trying you should have seen the I'm portfolio. If you'd have seen the tattoo, you would have never been yeah, able to I've see it. I've got like else. Um, the thoughts and images in my mind. <laughs> yeah. There was just all but sorts of I can just imagine. There. Yeah, it was funny. Did you have to keep a straight face during that as well? No, we just. <laughs> It was just an eye opener working in that shop. You it know, was just like um, a bit of a shock. <laughs> yeah, it was like you know, if someone comes here and is funny, you just tell them mm. to fuck off. And I was just like, yeah, what can we do that? And they were like, <laughs> why couldn't we do that? Well, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. True, <laughs> you know? it's, it's very true. Exactly. You know? It was just like, yeah, that's just that's the way it was. So mm. it was a different world. Yeah, into tattooing, but oh, I love it. But you've got Love some it. amazing memories with, <laughs> you know, some some up, some down, you yeah. know, some good stories. And yeah. oh, I had great experience at that shop. Like, I worked mm. there for three years and that was fun. We had, like, it was a good group of lads there that we used to have a laugh with and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, it was good times. Yeah. Really good times. Started my career off, so. Yeah, exactly. That and that's good. where you are today, you know. Yeah. yeah. So how about recently? Have you had any good tattoo, Um, I guess, tattooed some good ones like some that stick in your mind yeah well I do stories. like I said I do a lot of portraits now so I, yeah. a lot of the time I'm doing a lot of I'm tattooing a lot of people who who go through grief and stuff so yeah they're having memorial tattoos for maybe they've lost their child mm. pets parents you know yeah brothers sisters like and so like that the good thing about my job is I, sp- I mean a portrait takes a long time so it takes the majority of the day for me to tattoo yeah so I spend a long time with these people and like you see on the TV, they just tell me their stories, and you, you, I mean, you, you, they tell you things that are very personal. Very personal that they mm. they probably wouldn't tell. It. I, I'm like an unlicensed therapist. I keep saying, like people just tell me their <laughs> problem. I mean, some people have told me some stuff. I'm like, okay, no, yeah, yeah. I know more are, about are you, you than not... your wife. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you must be a very like um, safe haven for a lot of people to open, Maybe, open up I to. Know. You know, I don't know. I try it must to make be, like, people feel comfortable. You know, that's it. You know, it's. It, I think that the thing is, it's. Like again, it's a very intimate process getting tattooed. You know, yeah. You, t- you you're touching their body at the end of the day. So yeah. like, and you you're and giving them, them something, pain, that, and you're permanently marking yeah. skin. There's a level of trust there. Yeah. That you're not just going to draw cocks on them. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, back. They you know, really story trust then. you. You know. <laughs> yeah. So people just through that process feel like, especially if you talk, you talk to them and they like you, that they they open up and tell you a lot of yeah. things that they probably don't tell a lot of people. Mm. So. It's almost a lot of people say it's like therapy. Yeah, I'll be there to listen. Like I'll listen while yeah. I'm tattooing, and we talk. You know, I end up giving, finding myself giving people a lot of advice and stuff like yeah. that. So, but that's the, that's what I love doing. Like, yeah, that's the whole part of the job as well as doing the tattoo, and then the mm-hmm. whole process of them seeing it at the end and being made up is just the exactly. icing on the cake. And and that's what you love to still do to this day, and you've carried it yeah. on, not switched career paths. And no, that's amazing. I you know, imagine doing anything else. I mean, I do more TV tattooing. Yeah, and stuff but like that's that. showing and off your skill set yeah. and what you have a love for. And there are certain mm. shows, obviously, that I would do. Yeah. Like, that are cool, but not like... Yeah. But if, as long as it's aligned with who I am. Yeah, person, and doesn't try and perceive you in a yeah, like negative I'm not gonna, way. I'm not yeah. into it for that reason, so yeah. But, um, yeah, I couldn't imagine doing anything other than tattooing, to be yeah. honest. I don't want to. Yeah. I love tattooing. I, like, I used to say that when, you know, I was... I was like, I'm just living the dream, like, on TV. Mm. Like, even when I was off TV, like... My dream isn't the TV. My dream is the tattooing. Yeah, exactly. So that's me. I'm living my dream every day, and I've been since I was 18. So yeah, and that's the best way to live. You yeah, know? but you've got to chase it. Yeah, 100. You've you got, got to put go the hard work in. Yeah, <laughs> otherwise it, it'll never happen. And it's funny because you know people will say things like you know people who who maybe don't know me who just see me now might yeah. think oh he's successful and stuff, but it's took me 15 years. Yeah, I've so been doing it since it's I was not 18. been overnight like no. what a lot of young people yeah. assume it is yeah, you know it's that saying that people say you know yeah this overnight success took me 15 years yeah you know exactly but a lot of younger people think oh 15 years you know it's oh yeah if you said and it's really bad mindset to no. have basically yeah. oh yeah but like mm. i remember when i got the apprenticeship and i was told i wouldn't pick up a tattoo machine for three years mm. oh wow yeah and three years three gosh. years yeah but mm. my thinking at the time was well i just wanted to be a tattooist so bad that mm. i was just like the next three years will be difficult if I'm not earning much money yeah. and not doing this. Yeah. But I know this is what I want to do long term. As long term. as you're doing what you love, that's what matters. Yeah, and I wasn't, like mm. I said, I wasn't particularly academic. I was just average in school, so I was never going to go to uni. But if I had gone to uni, I'd be doing something there for at least three years. And then so you might the have wasted thing. a chunk of your life well, doing something. The, it, was this, it was the thing of the three-year <laughs> thing, really. It was like, well, I, 
if I went to uni to do something that I don't really want to do, what what's the point? What's you, the difference you've thrown... to me spending yeah. three years doing something that I really want to do? Yeah, you know? exactly. So it didn't throw me <clears> off the time period. I was just like, right, okay. Excuse me, burping. Um, no, you're fine. I'm being the right pig on here. Um, <laughs> no, no, you're fine. And then, um, yeah, so, but I was lucky because within like six months of me being at that shop, mm. his main tattooist um, left the studio and he basically yeah. just threw me in at the deep end. And I think it's thrown the industry into the limelight more, <coughs> excuse me, than what it was maybe when you first started out. Because, yeah. you know, the thought of being a tattoo artist, um, you know, f- some people work the whole lives to try and do that and nothing ever comes of it, yeah. you know. Yeah. And I think it's so much more known, recognised now, put in the media, yeah. and it makes you think anything's possible now if I just put the hard work in. Yeah, you know? it is like, you know, nothing's guaranteed. Yeah. And, you know, you have to be realistic in terms of that aspect that, like, I, nothing I have achieved was guaranteed for me, yeah. ever. But I just risked it. Yeah. Went for it. Had nothing to lose and well, yeah, why not? Like, yeah. And I, I, that's the attitude you have to have if you want to yeah. try and achieve whatever it is you want to <laughs> try and go for. Yeah. There, there is no guarantee. Mm. Like there's no, you know, people going about the quick, easy way to make money and quick, easy path to success and stuff like that. And I, I think it's misleading because it is. when it yeah. doesn't happen after a few go- attempts, people quit. Take it personally uh, yeah, as well. well. And, they, and mm. that's when they their level of pushing through goes yeah i remember like six months into me ta- once i started tattooing six months into that i remember i was i was gonna quit tattooing because i thought i couldn't get the hang of it like yeah. it was so difficult it was so different to drawing yeah so you was this close to i was so close yeah. to like thinking i just don't think i'm getting the hang of this but something about me wouldn't let me do it like i just yeah. thought nah I'm, something like a i want to do it like you, i'm gonna yeah. do that i'll find a way like i will find a way to be good at this yeah and uh I, and the more i just kept doing it and then that was it just it took just, off from there yeah, and the rest just, is history but i could have quit and yeah everything i've achieved since then would have been over in that moment yeah i don't if know you, where i'd be or whatever uh, would yeah have been in the like i mean do you have a certain wonder sometimes where you might have been y- yeah, I don't, I don't know. Oh, I really don't idea. know what no. I, would, I, don't, I couldn't <laughs> Could tell you. Could have been I anywhere. <laughs> no, I, I, could, I don't know. I really don't know mm. what I'd have been doing. No? I, no, no, I don't but know. But that's good because it shows that you were almost put on the, the earth to, to do tattooing and that's a love yeah. and passion that, you yeah. know, it, it's within you, you know, and you can tell that. Yeah. Whereas a lot of people, they might start, and but they don't have a love for it or a passion. Yeah. And I know that's because I've got that level of passion. That's why I know it's worked. And yeah. that's why I always believed it would work. Yeah. I always had that, like, unwavering belief. No matter what anyone was saying, I always just really believed, believed that I will get to where I want to be. I just did. Don't, and I don't know how. I don't, I don't know why. Like I know my my mum and dad was so encouraging, and stuff like that. And I think my dad and that and them instilled in us very young. Like to go, my dad was very good at talking to us about you can do this, you can do that. Like he he tell and us we were great. Possible, yeah. From young ages, you know. So maybe that's. I think that's probably where subconsciously it just comes from because it was ingrained in me very young. Yeah. To just work hard yeah. and work hard and you know it. What yeah. will be will be, but just, and you just had work that your good ass off. Support and... network as well yeah, around you. Very lucky to have had that, yeah. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Amazing. Yeah. So what do you see yourself achieving or do you have any sort of um hopes or something that you'd want to achieve going into twenty twenty four or by the end of the year? Do you know what? I I've I, I had a goal that I was gonna achieve all the things I'd I have achieved by the time I was thirty. And I yeah. did achieve I've achieved all the things I wanted to achieve by the time I was thirty, I did. Oh, amazing. So, like, I, like, I'm just, it's weird because I suppose people are always looking for the next thing, right? And I'm always open for the next thing and I'm, and you know, but now I'm at a point where I go with the flow of life now. Yeah. Because Don't I've done too all, much. No, yeah, not really. Like, because yeah. I've done all the, the, the stuff I wanted to achieve, I've done. Mm. And it's not like it's just over for me now. I just, I think, oh, well, that's it now. I'm just going to kick back and relax. It's not like that. No. I'm enjoying. Yeah. Enjoying the, 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 the ride, I think as a lot say. Of people, yeah get to the point of like success of where they've wanted where they wanted to go hit a goal and then they don't know what's next then yeah and then sometimes it's like they say you know when they get to the top of the hill the only way is down then mm. well that's not like what like it's like for me like yeah you know i can always make more money that's yeah. always a goal to make more money 
but I'm just like not chasing that. Like I'm just yeah. I'm if just it happens, working. it happens. I'm just going with the flow, enjoying yeah. my life. I enjoy tattooing. I enjoy my life, and yeah, just keep working hard. G- that's gonna it. stick out what you have a passion for, and that's it. And I just believe that you know, the main thing I think you've got to be good at in life is spotting opportunities when they're there. Yeah. Like I, when I go back to the um, the Twitter thing, like that was an opportunity that I'd spotted before a lot of people did. Was yeah, that I could, you know. And it was a very new avenue as well. Yeah, it was new. And I just knew straight away, well, they might see that if they might see this. And again, there was no guarantee. Mm. But um, I believed that this could be the way to make things work. Yeah. And it did. Just because I kept going for it, you know. And it it shows anything's possible if you want it to happen, you know. Yeah, so you've just got to be good at spotting opportunities because there can be opportunities in that. I mean, there's so many things that seemed like such little things Mm -hmm. that turned into massive opportunities that were just off the whim decisions, maybe. But if you'd have said no to that or yes to that, you may be in a completely different position now. Yeah. So anything can change your life in the in the blink of an eye. And that's what a lot of people don't realise as well, that life can change. Yeah. And you might think, oh, it's going to be like this for years and years, but things and it can may change. Be. It may know? be, but enjoy it. Yeah. Like just take because <clears throat> if it is years and years and years, by the time when you get to if you just keep going and when you get to the place you want to be, you'll yeah. go. You'll be able to go. And you know what? It took me years, this did, because yeah. you know how many shit years I had to get here. Mm. You, you're being an example to other people mm. who struggle to get to their success and, exactly. and are thinking about quitting. Yeah. And you're the when you're the person that doesn't quit and you then make it eventually, mm-hmm. people look up to you to go, well, he didn't quit and that was the proof. Yeah, That's exactly. what you want to be. Exactly. You know, I, I haven't got kids or anything, but I always think even like, mm. I actually think that far ahead, but when I do have kids, I want, to be an example even now when they look back at the things if they look back at videos of me they'll know mm. that i got to where i am because i didn't i yeah. didn't quit and i didn't give up and do you want <coughs> sorry excuse me do you want to pass them down from what you learned from your parents onto your kids oh yeah absolutely yeah like everything they said to you the support 100%, everything yeah. everything mm. like yeah i had the best of the best you know so i mm. uh, yeah and i you know it worked for me so I believe it'll work for my future kids as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have you have you thought about, you know, how many kids you want? Or, no, you know, I, no, I haven't. I'm getting go with the flow, no, see what I'll happens. I'll go with the flow again. Uh, yeah, I, I just... believe you're married, is that right? No, God, no, no. I'm not oh, I'm you're divorced. Not? Oh. No, I'm divorced. Yeah, I got divorced <laughs> a, f- a few years ago. Yeah, I'm not married now. I've got a girlfriend now. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm not see, married. Seeing how things go with that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's going good. Amazing. It's going good. Good to hear. Yeah. Well, I guess to finish up on, yeah. my last sort of question would be a little bit deep. <laughs> but um, answer any way you want. There's no right or wrong answer. Okay. Um, what would you like to leave on the world when you go? Like, what would you like to be remembered for, do you think? Um, I would just like to think that the people that I'll leave behind think highly of me. Mm that's it i only give i only care about what the people who i love think about me yeah i'm exactly. not bothered about what anyone else thinks about me it, it does not matter to me like yeah you know yeah that's it if, whoever i leave behind that i love and care about that's all i just care what they think about and what they say about me and if as long as they say he was the best or whatever like that, that, that that's, that's that, all that, that is all yeah. i care about yeah, that's and that's it. what means the most to you in your heart, and that's you know all what you want to, to look back on. Yeah, that's all that matters to me. If I'm when I get to whatever age, however old I make it, if I end up being on a deathbed, that's all I'll care about. Yeah, I'll only give a shit about that. Amazing. Yeah. Well, what a way to finish up the podcast. <laughs> thank you, thank you so much, Jay. I've no, really right. appreciated having you on the episode. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate you inviting me. Of course, thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe, guys, and see you in the next one.